like Joel said, it, you guys are supposed to know each other a little bit. Cause I do, seeing as it is kind of shorter, I don't really want to waste time with the like our get to know moment in the tavern. So do we want to go around the room and everyone just introduces their character a little bit? Maybe a wee story or I don't know. We don't need to give a story, but just something, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> a wee story, a name and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, just yeah. Why, why don't you start, Joel, for us then? Oh, okay. All right. Well, Sabaz is a tiefling uh, bard. Um, Sabaz has had a relatively traumatic life that he likes to uh, cover up with bits of poetry and prose uh, and a, a ready smile to kind of hide behind whatever else that might be. But the whole reason of joining a monster hunting crew is to ensure that the things that happen to him don't happen to anyone else. Uh, and that is his whole purpose behind that there. Uh, he is here to support you all because he's going to be the squishiest of everyone here. So <laughs> please protect me. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Leslie. Oh, uh, Edulis is a uh, Firbolg druid. She um, basically joined this crew under the initiative to uh, find discoveries. She's an archaeologist by heart, and unfortunately a druid by nature. <laughs> and <laughs> um, just wanted to discover areas that she had not seen before um i leslie am fairly new to playing a druid i've only played a circle of spore druids so this will be an interesting fun time for me um and i personally um edulis is I, and i will usually play characters on shorter campaigns like this very um she's gonna be i'm inquisitive about you guys and your characters so she will be inquisitive about whatever's going on with y'all um, so if you feel as though you are, you're getting hammered with too many, like, what do you mean? Um, <laughs> uh, let me know and I'll stop. <laughs> I'm just like, what are you doing? You know? Sure. So, okay, bye. Okay. Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Uruk is, uh, considers himself to be the world's greatest hunter uh, and lives for the thrill of the, the hunt and the chase. And that's, I think that's all he's got going on upstairs. Awesome. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> nice. I'm just getting the, uh, Ernie. the oh, visual sorry. of that oh. guy from Jumanji. You know, the yeah, one that, that comes that out. That is exactly <laughs> my model. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly I what it. I was thinking of. I was like, like Robin Van Williams? Helped, right? <laughs> Robin <laughs> Williams, the famed hunter from Jumanji. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah uh, so uh, my guy is uh, Dro Underfoot. He's a halfling, a uh, rogue. He is, uh, he's a really smart guy. He thinks probably he's smarter than most people. He's really not, but he is pretty smart. Um, and he is a bit of a scoundrel. Uh, he does work as an archaeologist, but uh, that's just that's just what he does in the daytime and the he, he likes to moonlight as a as a scoundrel a card shark uh he likes to you know kind of he, he likes to take the things that we find and uh sell them to uh unscrupulous people but he actually prefers selling them the stuff that is worthless and keep the good stuff for himself and uh he's not a bad guy he just doesn't mind hanging around bad guys because he likes to rip them off. Just because you're feeling a bad somewhere guy. in our history, you've stolen from Edulis, and she has no idea. <laughs> Not on purpose. These things belong no. in a museum. Dro yeah, she's like mine. <laughs> she's like panicking, and you're just. <laughs> As a general rule, he doesn't like to cheat friends. Oh. Good. I appreciate that. At, at least as far how as out nice of money. How, how kind. Out of, yeah. How kind. Out of currency. <laughs> <laughs> now, he might cheat you in a game of cards for some money. He's not going to, like, take money. Uh, he might. He, he won't take indirect money directly. Indirect yeah. Yes, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Stop well, by proxy. Cause, yes. Well, because then you, you set yourself up for it. You oh, set yourself right, up for right. it. It's your <laughs> fault. <Yes>. That's awful. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, it's your fault that I'm a swindler. Right. It's, it's okay. It's okay. God, okay. Not my fault. <laughs> All right. I didn't do anything wrong. I'm the scorpion. Oh You're the frog. Oh my god, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your nature. It's just yeah. your nature. Yeah, it's my nature. Amazing. <laughs> okay. But that is him in a nutshell. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. And Connor. Yeah, uh, Illavos is he's quite a simple bloke, to be honest. He was 
He's a cleric, he's an elven cleric, but he is a war cleric, so he's a little bit different to probably a lot of the ones that you've encountered. He sort of started out, you know, with a childhood and being raised to join the priesthood, uh, actually to accompany armies and forces as a more traditional support cleric, but got a bit bored of that and then realized that his one talent in life is pretty much hitting things. Um, he's quite a, he's quite a good guy, really. You know, he's sort of out monster hunting and whatnot because he finds guards work and other things that he's otherwise capable of a little bit tedious, and uh, it's his way of trying to fulfill his potential, but... He's a little bit rough around the edges, is our all of us, but he does all right. So that's good. I'm, I have all you guys fit so well into the story. Actually, I'm, it's going to be pretty good. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, it's it's turned out pretty perfectly. Um, but anyway, well, I, I'm ready, Joe. I've got I've got nothing else. So I don't you know got if nothing you want else. Hit. No, I'm good. Wow. That's it. We're done for the. We're night. done. So all right. Caught. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. I've right, had one, honestly. This is this is good. <laughs> this is good. All right, cool. Hi, and welcome everyone to Dive Hole Pre Presents Shadows of the Canopy. Another one of our uh, small installments of Craig gets back in the DM chair and takes us through traumatic experiences. <laughs> Hooray! So from this point on, uh, I'm going to shut up, and Craig is going to lead us into whatever the hells we're going to be into. Uh, that whole character spiel stuff will be there at the, the beginning of this as the descriptions along with our little character photos and things like that. Um, so DM, sir, whenever you're ready, take us in. Well, yeah, I'm ready. But Adam, do you want, do you, do you, you normally like to do a wee social media intro for everyone, Joel? Do we need to do that? Oh, or? yeah, we could absolutely, we could do that now. Uh, I was just going to get it later. Yeah, it's and then, it's so important uh, to me, but like you tell no, me. No, you're totally right because I, <laughs> since we did the introductions earlier, that was off camera. So, um... I'm just going to do the same thing. So it's just going to be Ernie, who's in my top left on Discord. You get to introduce yourself first, and I'm just going to go around and call on everyone. So Ernie, where, where, who are you? A, and where can people find you on the internet? You're muted, sir. Can I? Fantastic. That, that stays I in. Muted because but... I, like, I muted myself. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, he's going to do his thing. I'm going to mute my mic real quick. No, uh, no. My name is Ernie. Uh, I mute myself very often, and uh, I am also uh, known on the internet as the Blurred Without Fear. And uh, I run a YouTube channel where I talk about uh, comic books and uh, comic book things, other comic book related stuff. It's the and only apparently, only reason I know anything ooh. about comic books is because of that yeah. channel. So, <laughs> Thank I, you. I I am I know stuff and I like to share it with people. That that, that is uh that is my thing. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Continuing over to Drew. Where can we find you, sir, on the internet? Hey, yeah, guys. I'm a uh, Drew or Mudcat. Uh, you can find me personally on Twitch.tv/Mudcat. Uh, or more importantly, if you're here and you're a tabletop nerd, you can find me on YouTube at D20 Deathmatch. Uh, we run uh, PvP tabletop games, basically WWE meets D&D. Uh, &D. Uh, we run our own system now, but you can come over there for lots of chaos and absurdity and uh, lots of bone crushing action. Yeah, the exciting thing is your own system. So, uh, do we do it's we know? Fun. And it's free. Very cool. It's free. See, there you go. And all links and stuff for all that stuff will be down below too. Uh, continuing through, Connor, please introduce yourself. Well, Where can people God, find you? Joel. Yes. Hi everyone. My name's Connor. I used to be a YouTubey person. Now I'm a game <laughs> designer who sits and makes games, and then I sit and play games. Mm -hmm. And I don't go outside except to watch baseball. So I'm not very interesting. You probably don't want to find me on the internet. Uh, <laughs> subscribe to Joel's channel. Hey, That's my advice. Thanks. I appreciate that. And then yeah. comment your favorite. I mean, favorite... I gave him his D&D &D show, which is like the best thing on his channel anyways. So. Wow. Gave... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no but he's, he's right, though. No, that, he's right. Uh, yeah, okay. He's not wrong. Uh, I said I'm kidding, but I'm just being nice. Anyways, so. comment your favorite baseball team below, and I'm sure he'll trash talk them. Uh there you Probably, go. Probably. Depending yeah. on who it is. Depending on who it is. Uh, skipping over our DM for the moment. Hey, Leslie, where can people find you out on the internet? Hi, I'm Leslie, also known as simply JXN or Jackson. Um, I am a, a retired, come back from hiatus, <laughs> retired again, come back from hiatus streamer. Um, I That's make just artwork. Content creation. <laughs> I've done, um, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch lately, um, Overwatch 2. And I DM'd for Joel one time mm -hmm. on a Studio Ghibli uh, themed campaign, which was really fun. And Blurred was a part of that. Mm -hmm. Blessed by Blurred. And you can find me on Twitter or uh, Twitch 
uh, at simply JXN, both with an underscore or without, whatever you'd like. Um, yes. You should go watch it, Seed yeah. of Life, if you guys haven't already, on our channel here. That's the first fantastic. thing I ever watched on your channel. Hey! I was trying to decide if it was a huge mistake contacting you. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> so Maybe we'll find out Maybe in this Maybe we'll show. find out. <laughs> God. Uh, you keep coming back, though, so it can't have been that bad. Yeah, I have very little else to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> of course. Craig, please introduce yourself for everyone at home. Oh, um, well, I'm, I'm Craig. I, I don't have a YouTube channel or stream or anything like that. You can't find here. me on the internet, except, yeah, I live on Joel's you channel now. He's taken me in. I'm I just have. a poor wee mm. internet orphan that's <laughs> been fostered by Joel. <laughs> we have some guy who it. lives here. Yeah, just yeah. the guy who lives here. Sometimes yeah. we, we let the janitor here run some games, right? Is that mm. how that goes? <laughs> the make a wish kind of stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. Uh, welcome to all. Well, these are all people who have played on channels before, but we finally get to get them all together for this lovely game here. Uh, what's going to be a, a two or a three shot, depending on how things go, led by our dear DM. Craig. So, Craig, with all introductions and things out of the way, you guys can find all the links and things for all that below in the description. Please take us in. So, this story is set in a tropical archipelago nestled within the vast sea of mirrors. Here, amidst the idyllic shores and warm ocean breeze, lies the city of Rancoa. Rancoa is a bustling metropolis perched upon one of the many islands, pulsating with life and activity. Towers adorned with intricate patterns rise proudly, their vibrant colours reflecting the cultural tapestry that weaves through the heart of the city. Ornate temples dedicated to various deities stand side by side with the bustling marketplaces, each vying for your attention. But it's not just the alluring architecture or the diverse populace that draws people to Rancoa. This city is a gateway to boundless opportunities. Trading routes that thread through its heart bring with them a constant influx of goods, treasures, and secrets from distant lands. Opportunities for wealth, fame, and adventure abound, luring intrepid souls from all walks of life. The promise of untold riches, hidden relics, and ancient civilizations lie within this collection of islands, and igniting the hearts of those who dare to try and claim them. Amidst the activity and grandeur, we find ourselves on the paved streets of Rancoa's docks. You are greeted by the cacophony of seagulls' cries and the rhythmic lapping of waves against wooden hulls. Ships of all shapes and sizes line the docks, their sails billowing with the winds of distant lands. Glistening hulls bear witness to the tales of far-off voyages, while the scent of salt and the sea hangs heavy in the air. Upon this dock strides a group of five individuals, a group of mercenaries whose fame is on the rise. And why don't we start with Joel, who you'd like to describe your our, character. Our fame is on the rise? Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> you would see uh, Sabaz. Uh, Sabaz would be kind of just shy of six feet, rather slender looking purple tiefling, tall purple horns that sweep backwards and long lion's mane like purple hair braided behind them. Um, sharp pointy teeth, a long whip like tail as well. Uh, and an easy smile at most times. They are well adorned with many different bits of golden jewelry that they wear like the pirates of old, in so fact that their friends won't have to pay for their funeral when it eventually comes. Um, yeah, Sabaz would wear uh, somewhat of a flourishing cape, definitely one of those to kind of throw the shoulder cape away as, you know, leading into maybe a loot solo of some kind, but would likely be uh, fiddling around at the moment uh, with a small flute, just kind of lightly playing it, ensuring it that our travel did not warp any of its fixings. Wonderful. Uh, Leslie. Um, I would... La, 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 la. God, I'm so <laughs> nervous. I haven't done TD in so long with you guys. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> Don't worry, your um, fame is on the rise. Take fame is on the <laughs> rise. <laughs> all right, all right. Don't mess um, it no, Edulis is. Shut up. Edulis <laughs> is um, probably hovering towards, um, probably safely amongst the middle of our group. Um, if we are about to depart in any way, she definitely is counting her bits and things, making sure everything's in order, um, taking note. She is a on the shorter side for bulk, like seven foot. Um, She's kind of a reddish to green tinted um, skin, long brown and black hair that's been 
uh, braided more out of utility than out of style. Um, her attire is really simple. Basically, um, she's trying to be super efficient um, for this trip as possible, packing lightly, only the tools uh, that she needs. Um, and she's probably, um, and Blurred, I'm going to lean into you for this, um, but she's probably... Lean into uh, me. <laughs> she's probably um, kind of talking at Blurred's character about what she's got and what she's bringing and also double checking with him about, um, okay, I I brought, okay, I got the four health potions that we had last time, but did you get the, do you remember the, um, the machete that we had, the last adventure that we went out? Did you get that? Do you remember that? Or did you? Do you mean the one we, we, we used to whack through the... Yeah, the, but the one that you also, the one you got that spider with, you, I'm not gonna, you know, the one you, the scary spider, that guy. Um, I know, I know. I, I, it's okay, sorry, I didn't mean to call back any memories. It's probably but, still dirty. <laughs> I figured you treasured it since you capped it with that, but. <laughs> I keep everything. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Well, Andy, why don't you describe your character next? Yeah. <laughs> with the uh, mache. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> Uh, Dro is, uh, well, he's a halfling, uh, and a, uh, a, a, ra a rather, a rather wee lad, uh, not particularly, uh, of, of much height. He's probably knee high to most people, or not knee high, maybe like upper thigh high to most people. Uh, knee high to, uh, Edgeless, uh, most likely, if, if even that. Uh, but yeah, he's, uh, he's, He's a street smart guy, but also very, very well educated. Uh, is uh, he's as far as like his uh, attire and his looks, uh, he tends to dress not like super extravagant, uh, but well enough to let you know that he has some status. Whether he actually has that status is another story altogether. Uh, but he likes to let people know that uh, that he is <clears throat> somebody. Um, the, as far as like, yeah, as far as his looks go, uh, he tends to wears his hair and some long locks. He has, a uh, very, uh, sharp green eyes and, uh, often has a little bit of a smirk on his face most of the time, even when he probably shouldn't. And Wonderful. I'm hanging out with Edgeless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Drew, if you'd like to go next. Yeah. Uh, Uruk <laughs> is a very large individual, um, is half orc, but also kind of a mix of a crocodile. Yeah. Sort of, sort of like, uh, <laughs> sort of like a lizard from Spider-Man, I suppose, <laughs> to a degree, like a large <laughs> lizard man. Yeah. Um, but he, uh, wears very tattered and worn clothing that blends in with the, kind of the nature around him. It's... Uh, his appearance really doesn't matter much to him. Uh, he considers himself to be quite the uh, quite the hunter and tracker, um, and really his whole life revolves around that thrill of the hunt. And um, in this setting, pretty much in any setting, he would be keeping an eye out for any threats around the group, uh, probably smelling the dirt for no reason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, as one does. Yeah. yeah. And lo looking for signs of any sort of uh, any sort of prey in the area at all times, as his eyes dart constantly, looking, uh, you know, a bird, a deer, whatever, doesn't matter. Wonderful. And lastly, Connor, if you'd like to describe your character's appearance. Yeah, you see Illavos. He's uh, a couple of steps behind the rest of the group, as you notice. He's fumbling with a very poorly rolled cigarette while simultaneously trying to wipe the sweat from his brow, grumbling to himself. He's got sort of shortly cropped dark hair and a very stubbly, ill-kempt beard, and he's dressed in what was probably originally quite an expensive suit of armor, but at this point, other than being visibly quite well maintained, it is nicked and battered and bruised all over. He does have a sword and a shield slung by his side, but of much more note is the large stone maul he carries slung on his back, and as you see him stumbling along this docks with sweat pouring off his brow, he begins fumbling and breaking matches again and again as you realize that he is quite the towering figure of an elf. He's a little bit shorter than Edulus, by no, by no doubt, but he is 
built as colloquially one could describe as a brick shit house. This guy is a solid <laughs> rectangle of elf, which is quite unlike his mostly elegant peers. Yes, you see him not having the best of times in the tropical climate. Wonderful. Um, okay, so why are you all here? Um, well, you have all accepted a job posted by the Wyland Utano Mining Company. It stated a need for a hardy group of individuals for an investigation into one of their mining operations that had gone quiet on the famed Thundering Isle. Completion of the assignment would award you with 500 gold pieces, and you were told to report to a dwarf named Balazar, who you would find a tavern on the docks known as the Carapace Cantina. Sorry, what was the name of the mining company? Uh, Wyland Utano. Excellent. This uh -huh. is going to go well. Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Sorry, wait. Oh, I wonder what I that's about. I, <laughs> I thought I heard that and I was like, yeah. Mm. No foreshadowing here. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Noted. Okay, interesting. What no was way the, this goes wrong. What was the dwarf's mm. name? I got Carapace Cantina. <laughs> what was the dwarf's name? Uh, Balazar. Balazar. God, that's a cool yeah. name. I wish I had a I heard right. you guys taking notes <laughs> like nerds. Yeah, okay, whatever, man. <laughs> I'm just going to ask questions when I inevitably don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to cheat off the smart people. Oh, I'm going yeah. to roll for it later <laughs> to see if I remember. <laughs> per perks of playing a uh, big dumb guy. That's uh, that's how we do it here, right? Uh, DM, uh, what do I roll to see if I remember uh, Joel's notes? Wow. <laughs> it's like a sleight of hand check to steal them rather than trying to remember them, I think. Yeah, they, roll for plagiarism. Like, uh, roll for hmm. plagiarism. Uh, I, yeah, I think while we're hmm. we're moving along, uh, Sabaz, having sufficiently decided that the flute is still intact and put it back in case, would fall back uh, to where Illavos is. Goes, My dear man, please give me a moment. And he'll summon some flame to his fingers to replace the matches that are clearly not working <laughs> to light his cigarette. Now, yeah, if... Lovos will lean in and light his cigarette and look at the flame and be like, is that a bloody joke? It's too hot here as is. Well, I'll put it out, I'll put it out. But um, you have any more of that tobacco? I would like to fill my pipe before we get too much further into town. Oh, I've got it here somewhere, and he'll start rummaging in the folds of his armor and, and his satchel. He goes, it might, uh, be a bit damp by now, but here you go. And he hands you this very, very well-traveled leather pouch with loose tobacco in it. Pull it out. Uh, yeah, all right. Uh, a little damp. I understand why you had trouble lighting it. Thank you, my good man. Uh, so, any knowledge about this uh, Balazar fellow we're supposed to meet? Absolutely not, quite frankly. Lovely, wonderful. Just like all the other jobs, then? Pretty much, yeah. I'm mostly here to make sure that, uh, well, mostly I can pay my rent at the end of the month. And that I don't die. Keep that in mind. That too, of course. That would be most tragic. But... Exactly. And you keep that in mind. Hm. Mm. Give him a little pat on the shoulder and move back to where he lights the pipe while we move into town. As a... Yeah. As the smell of your pipe kind of wafts through the air, Uruk would kind of lumber over to to where you're smoking, and and you would you would hear him before oh, you see him because he would be. <sighs> Are you good? Could you put that out? Uh, I would rather not. Uruk. You're obscuring the scent of the hunt. Rook, we do not even know what our quarry is. How do you know what the scent is? Our quarry is Balazar, and I will hang him from my mantle. Oh, oh, oh hold on now. Balazar is I giving... I will find him. All right. Balazar is giving us a job, Rook. I enjoy your enthusiasm, but please don't hang our proprietor, well, our benefactor from anything. At least until he pays us. I'm sure there's other things you can most likely <clears throat> hang from the mantle. You, you know what you could do, in fact, um, because we know where Balazar is going to be. Could you hunt me down some less damp tobacco? Because it seems that everything here is just wet. If it exists in the forest, I can find it. No, 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 in town, not the forest. He's instantly going to run off ah, looking for tobacco. We'll, we'll, <laughs> I'm sure he'll catch up. Well, you set him off again. Uh, you know, I've got to be very, I've got to be much more careful with what I'm saying, I think. Mm. Um, 
There has been there was that one time when I was reciting a poem and he took it really to heart and then set out for three days. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really should have learned my lesson then. At least we could smoke in peace then. True to Jeez. that. Yeah. Proceed to practice smoking. Yeah. <laughs> Read the <laughs> teleprompter. <laughs> Question mark. Well, I was wondering that, Uruk, are you actually wanting to search for a tobacco yes, shop? Or yes! Something? Yeah, please. Okay. Find okay, me something you can, good! Um, you can make an investigation check. Oh, perfect. I love this. First roll of the game. Uh -huh. oh, not my strong suit. <laughs> it's a ten. <laughs> it's a ten! Okay. Bang on even! <laughs> You you search and search the docks, but there's not quite anything here. It's mostly just warehouses and, and stockyards, things like that. So it's going to take you probably about 10 minutes to get to like a trade district to find something. Um, so it's up to you. If you still want to continue, then you, you will be able to find something. Oh, we did put oh, on yeah. the set. Oh, if yeah. I, if I find any sort of... If I'm in a, a populated area and I find some sort of tobacco merchant, <laughs> you know, it'll, it'll be... I'll just uh, stumble up and... Give me all of your tobacco. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, you, you approach a, a small stall where um, a young gnome has a variety of leaves and herbs spread out. Um, and he says, all of it? Yes, all of it. Quickly. <clears throat> okay, um, well, that'll be about 20 gold pieces. Put one. Uh, he's gonna look at his his gold. I should have said you guys all have fifty gold each. Oh, okay, There's good. I was gonna say. Right. I wonder you how go, long yeah. it takes him to oh, find okay. out that we haven't gotten paid yet. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we would need it so quickly, but <laughs> you, uh, you, you would give me this tobacco for these useless coins? Absolutely. You, yeah, yeah, useless. Yeah. And then take them you, you all. Want, want, uh, oh, certainly. <laughs> so, okay. Well, you hand over the the fifty gold, and, and he bags up what what he look what looks like tobacco leaves in in a small brown <laughs> bag, and, and hands it back to you. <laughs> I, it's, <laughs> Pleasure I mean, doing I, business with you. I don't even wait. I just run off. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least like, we'll pro be probably well shoulder stocked. checking some people on, along the way. Like he's not very very poised. Oh, God. Do we make it to the bar? Can we? Well, yeah, I would, <laughs> you, you, do, you guys would money know. Now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you would know where the Carapace Cantina is. It's it's famous. Um, it is at the far end of the docks, and you'd eventually arrive. I would say it seems like Uruk is setting a blistering pace for himself, so he'd probably catch up with you all yeah. as you as you arrive at it. Um, I can find it. <laughs> Um, so, at the far end of the docks, you spot the bar, and it's a giant turtle shell that's been hollowed out, and the structure's been built within it. There's a scattering of tables and chairs placed out front, and a female half-orc lies slumped in a chair, dozing in the warm sun. But you can see the entrance is carved into the wooden walls of the structure. That's awesome. Oh, oh, and, oh, here he comes. Here he comes. That was actually faster than I thought. He's getting good at this. I bet he got all the tobacco. All of it? You expect he got all of it? I mean... That's right, he probably did, didn't he? Yeah, what? Is that a sack mm. he's carrying? Oh. Alright. <clears throat> uh, Baruch, we're over here! Yes, I know, I got all of the tobacco. Well, you were right, Dro. Here's the gold. sling the sack at your feet. <laughs> no, no! Oh, yeah, alright, that's a bit wet. Okay, I'll pick that up. Uh, open it up. Take a take a whiff. Is it good or bad tobacco? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's it's a variety of of a tobacco types, pack. I guess. <laughs> so there is like shredded fine tobacco you'd roll for a cigarette, sure. but there's also just raw tobacco leaves you'd need to grind up. It is literally all of the the tobacco all of that it. the yeah, it's just all in one sack. So kind uh, of inconvenient, but it is it looks okay. You know, um, Aruk, this is good. This will do us well. Well done. My man, yes, well, well done. There is no prey that I cannot find. Yes, and in fact, we are looking for your second not prey, <laughs> uh, but perhaps new friend, huh? Inside this uh, bar here. I, uh, I don't understand. Uh, uh, a benefactor, the man who hired us. Anyways, um, uh, Ilivos, do you mind 
taking this. Just hand him the bag. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> All right, well, don't look at me when it goes missing. Well, I'm gonna visibly dump my uh, sweaty, damp tobacco into a nearby like plant pod and just take a handful and <laughs> shove it in. <laughs> All right, the rest of it can go in the backpack. I think. I just, you know, you know me. I, when I cut a figure, I don't want like a random sack, you know, obscuring the silhouette, especially if we hit the golden hour. I don't know what you're saying about my silhouette, but all right, I'll, I'll jab it in my backpack. All right. Uh, Shall we? Inside, then? Hmm. I say we shall. Alright. Mm -hmm. We okay. go in. You shall. Um, so, you step inside, and your eyes take a moment to adjust to the gloomy interior after coming in from the bright sunshine, but you can see a simple bar lines the wall to your right, where a bored-looking tiefling is hunched over a battered novel. Um, there's two off-duty dock workers sitting quietly at one table, they seem to be conversing with each other, but at the far end of the, of the tavern, you can see numerous candles and lanterns illuminating a dwarf like a beacon. Uh, sprawled before them are numerous ledgers and stacks of paper, and a small strong box next to them as well. You also notice lying on the floor next to them is a half-ogre, their head propped up on a great club as a pillow, whilst a deep snore rumbles throughout the tavern. You know, it could be a little less obvious about it. It's about as good as having a giant exclamation point above your head. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's our dwarven man, though. Um, I suppose we shouldn't disturb the half-ogre. Uh, who's doing the talking? Well, I, mean, I, could, you're I usually the, the one talking. that's good with the words. You're uh, usually the... Who's doing the talking that's not Uruk? Oh. <laughs> I vote Uruk. No, all right, Ilavos is out <laughs> here. Drode, you, me, Edulis, you feeling up to it I mean, this time? We've been practicing your negotiating skills. I mean, I, um... Oh, all right, I, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah? okay. I, I wanna, oh, you've got I, I'm gonna, this. I'm gonna kind of poke it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna poke at Edulis and be like, uh... <clears throat> he, like, bends might down. I, might I, um... You mind if I... I'll coach you just in case you get a little mm. uh, cold feet. I'll, Ooh, like, I'll climb mm. up and you whisper in your ear just in case. Don't just don't right. tug too. And so, Baz, I want to make clear yes. for the eighth oh, no, no, time. I'll, I'll be as gentle as a breeze. Right. I do not know guidance. All right, so I can't help you. Honestly, <laughs> that's totally fine. <laughs> and nothing a little inspiration from the party bot can't handle here, isn't that right, Edulis? You've got this, all right? Remember, you are strong, you are smart, and you can handle anything. Strong. I'm and smart. also, people like you. And people and like you. If he says no, I'll crush his head. Hopefully, you don't Maybe have to do that. Last resort. And we really need to talk. It'll turn as as you move forward, Edulis, to Sabaz mm. will turn to Ilavos. We really need to talk about you not having guidance. This is unbelievable. And <laughs> <laughs> She's going to. I don't um, like studying. <laughs> Edulis will um, edge her way around the tables and chairs from the entrance, um, well, and she'll probably pass the dock workers. Oh, pardon, pardon, pardon me. I'm strong. People like me. Like fidgeting as she walks up to the bar, <laughs> and then she kind of is going to. Um, so, is this like half orc? This is a huge. You said half orc, correct? Right? Sleepy. Uh, half ogre. Half oh, ogre. Ogre. Excuse me. Is yeah. this half ogre basically like? blocking path. No, he's kind of just off to the side. Um, oh, okay. You, can, you can walk up right to the table where, where the dwarf is. Oh, okay, okay. So she'll um, kind of tugging at her bits of strap on her pack, um, throw it a little bit to the side and pull it to the stool um, next to this person. And um, uh, good, good, af good afternoon. How are Hello. Good afternoon. I'm Balazar. I take it mm. you're part of the the mercenaries of Ired. Oh, you're so insightful. Yes, I am Edulis. And well, it's nice Dro. to meet you. Oh, this is Dro. I, I assume you've well, already I, climbed up why, in some way. Yeah. Why don't you <laughs> all step forward <laughs> so I can take a good look at you? Oh, right. Yeah, Elevos, we'll talk oh, about this, this is, later, all right? This is Salazar. Um, 
Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, I am Sabaz. Sorry, I'm Sabaz. Sure Excuse you've, me. You've uh, <laughs> heard a, my mistake. name previously. Uh, I've been circulating some pamphlets for some time here with the, you know, the heroics of our adventures. Huh? This is Ilavos, Edulis, of mm-hmm. course, and Dro. You've met, and uh, our hunter here, Uruk. I am Uruk. You will give us what we seek. Hold on. Down, big boy. And, uh, mm. At your service. As you, <laughs> as you step closer, you can see that this is a uh, dwarf. He's got jet black hair cooled into an extremely tight ponytail, and his beard has been braided into two thick ropes that swing off his chin. He wears a well-tailored suit with a high collar that cuts almost painfully into his neck, and you can see rivulets of sweat running across his forehead. Um, you also notice... Uh, probably you especially, Droll. He has a very large gold ring emblazoned with Y and W on one thumb that he frequently spins as he, as he talks to you. Um, that is a nice ring. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, he says, Well, you're a good looking bunch. <laughs> Thank you. In fact, Thank some you. damn fool accused you all of being the best, but we'll see about that. Well, they would be probably correct, at least in this town. <laughs> Aye. Well, what do you know about the job so far? A mining place gone quiet, eh? Uh, that's about what we've been told. Uh, Ilivos was supposed to have more of the particulars, but every time I question him about it, he doesn't seem to have a damned clue. It's still like being asked about my particulars, is all. <sighs> it's about the group's <laughs> particulars, Ilivos. But so please, please do, start at the beginning. All right, I'll fill you in. So, the... Myland Utano Mining Corporation, we've got a number of claims across the islands. One of them, three days ago, has stopped reporting in. I dispatched a scout yesterday, Haylock, um, to have a look, but I've lost contact with them. So now I need somebody, a group, more better armed to go out there and find out what's going on. We use the island to mine precious gems, and they normally send a shipment back once a week. So what I'll ask you lot to do is head to the island, Find the mining claim, and find out what stopped the supply of these gemstones. Well, that seems easy Ooh. enough. Uh, transport's been secured, I suppose? Aye, if you, when we're done here, if you make your way to dock number seven, you'll find uh, Cherry Burnside there. She'll, she'll take you across the island. Cherry Burnside, lovely name. Yes. The mining claim itself, you'll find it on the island. Um, it's at the base of Devil's Butte. It's a, a tall rock spire uh, with a, a flat top. Um, so why do they call it the Devil's Butte? Ooh, would um, Edulis, and I roll to see if I know this based on her. Ooh. Uh, you, can, you can make a nature check for sure. <laughs> I have a feeling she'd just like, Edulis. Oh, oh. Tell you. Yeah, let me tell you. <laughs> Okay, well, the, the, you, I mean, I, just, I only noticed I had to look it up what it's called. A, a butte is like, you know, those tall, flat rock mm. spires, like normally in deserts, places like that. So, Edgeless, you would know that, I would say, if that's what you want to, to be she's, able to impart she's to She's just going to gonna ramble. She's like, oh, and then, you know, the shape, it's it's not exactly like a plateau. It's a little bit skinnier. It actually lops off at the top. And then they call it devil. And she's going to explain why, I, like, in legend, they call it this title. Yeah, why and, is like, it called devil, DM? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're asking me, you know, but if you ask Balazar, he just says, it's just a name that stuck, I suppose, by the first people I'm who went to check on the island. I'm asking what our 20 in nature tells us yeah. about the <laughs> there, devil's there, portion. There, there, is, there is nothing. It's just okay. it's just a local name. All right. All right. So no probably, legend. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She's probably going to tell you some legend about how, like, historically there was tale that there was sacrifice that happened on this ledge in which you abide the devil away from... Um, and he travels as they adventured through there, but I'm sure we're fine. That's a long time ago, sure. and you know. <laughs> oh, this like... place sounds lovely. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. <clears throat> sounds fantastic. Right. Um. All right. Go there. Find out what happened. Um. And then return and claim the gold. Exactly. Aye. But there's just two other things I'll make you aware of. Um. The island, as well as the local flora and fauna that could be dangerous is home to a tribe of lizard folk um they are normally hostile but stay away from the claim but i suspect if something's gone wrong it's probably to do with them in addition 
when you're done at the mining claim, there's a trail that leads south from it to a device I've, we've called the Transmission Wavecaster. That's how you'll call for pickup. Transmission Wave Caster. Aye. Call for Our artificers help. put this together. It's kind of like a... Do you know what a sending stone is? Oh, yeah. It's sort of like familiar. that, but we... Yeah, it's sort of like that, but allows kind of open communication between two fixed points. Hmm. Convenient. I like that. Uh, well, I, I don't think we'll have much trouble with the, the lizard folk. Isn't that right, Uruk? We've got our own right here. I will kill them all. No, that's not what I meant. We'll have to uh, my work. gemstones. Yes. No, any uh, other yeah. bits and baubles we should be keeping an eye out for. Just for... It well, if you purposes. if you do find a shipment of gemstones, I would ask that you don't steal them. Um, oh, even well, bring them back, potentially. That would be a great help. But it may be difficult to move them through the jungle. It, it will be a large amount. A large if, amount of gemstones that we should not... Dro, dip our hands into. Mm -hmm. Understood. <laughs> Understood. We are professionals. I was just asking if there's anything else that we maybe we should keep an eye out professionals. for. Professionals. Know. Oh, the consummate professional. Any other? What do you think I am? A thief? It's literally mm. why we hired you. Um, any <coughs> other potentials that we should know about? Uh, not really. The the islands it's surrounded by rock, so mm. you have to be careful making your way on and off it, and that sort of thing. But. That's about it, really. I'm sure our Terry Burnside will transport us safely and soundly. I uh, she'll get you there, no problem. Hmm. Oh, and if you find Haylock, try and try and help her. All right. Um, get a little description of who we're looking for, then. Or should I just go around the island screaming for Haylock? Uh, well, she's a half elf scout. Um, she only carries a bow with her, um, and she has kind of a. Fixing the various feathers on one shoulder. Feathers. Got it. All right. We're looking for something with feathers, Uruk, but not birds. Not to kill. Not to kill. To assist. We'll assist. get through the particulars uh, later. Jeez, uh, I've got to be so careful. What, what kind of feathers? Oh, good question. They were bright, I guess, of the local kind of tropical birds, that sort of thing. Uh, not much for the uh, aviary things, huh, Balazar? No, I, I tend to focus on business. There are a particular, um, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt, but there's a particular um, rare a kingfish that is from that island. Maybe, um, maybe uh, that's the type of feathers. So I'd, maybe. B I Balazar, know. any any uh, in you know input on that? Balazar's stony you... gaze just <laughs> looks at you. And he takes a long draw in his pipe and just says, I don't know. Understood. All right. Well, I want to see the kingfisher, so. Right. Yes, we should be ready to head out. Um, about how uh, how far is uh, the island? Should we prepare for a multi-day trek here? It could only be about two hours. Oh, easy it shouldn't take then. you long. You'll be there later today. Lovely. Um, well, friends, shall we... Uh, well, shall we go? Is there a contract that I can sign about the whole 500 gold pieces thing once we find out what's happened here? There will be a moment I'll draft something up. Um, yes. And you kind of, you see his pen move rapidly and fluidly uh, across a sheet of parchment as he draws up a contract. And it, it kind of outlines the job of going to the Thundering Isle, of investigating and potentially restoring the mining operation on the island. And if not, just reporting in and providing information on what happens. And upon your return, you will be paid a sum of 500 gold pieces. Sure, yes, all right. So, well, uh, everyone looks all good here. Uh, signatures, signatures. Uruk, just make your mark, all right? And uh, we'll be good. He literally bites his hand and then <laughs> slams it on the paper. <laughs> a bloody claw print. Uh, there you go. Uh, that's the mark of our band. Glad none of us else have to do that. Wonderful. Uh, all right. Uh, pack your bags, everyone. Let's uh, get on the road. I guess we just go. Okay. Let's just do the thing. Sure. I'm hanging on to Edgeless. 
<laughs> just hanging on, <laughs> perched <laughs> like a koala. Yeah, it's just too, yeah. It's, like, it's like too polite to tell you that it's way too hot, and you're like <laughs> just <laughs> sweating just profusely. Like, <laughs> just like no, no it's, it's, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> all right. Does the mom the mom thing where you're holding a kid? And you're just like oh, okay. okay. <laughs> So we go to the, back to the docks to find Cherry Burnside? Uh, yes, so um, you step out of the Carapace Cantina and make your way back along the docks. You see the activity has increased a bit as the morning's gone on and you frequently have to sidestep groups of, of dock workers and make way as goods are moved on and off the ships. But eventually you make your way down to dock number seven. And well, actually, is there anything else you guys like to do? Because this is kind of the point of no return. Um, is it easy enough to purchase like a healing potion with the 50 gold pieces. All right, yeah, we'll just make if, if for those of you who still have 50 gold, if you want, you can just quickly have a, a standard. You can trade that in for a standard healing potion if you want. Perfect. I Ooh, will like it. do that. Uruk <laughs> will on. heal off the, the land. <laughs> no, Uruk, this is for you when you inevitably get yourself killed. So, don't worry. I got you, my boy. Uh, but yeah, all, all 50, I'll spend it. One potion, Wonderful. please. Well, let's hope you succeed or else you're, <laughs> you're kind of flat broke, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> well, been here before, we'll be here again. Okay. Um, so, you make your way onto dock, the dock number seven, and as you turn onto the wooden planks, where you would expect to see a ship, you actually see a large twin rotor gyrocopter. Huh? The, the gyrocopter squats plainly on a square section of the docks, which you would assume to be its landing pad. It's a mixture of metal and pipes, panels of wood and glass windows. A large door in the center has been moved to the side, revealing rows of, the, of seats inside for passengers. The contraption glints almost blindingly in the sun. It is clearly well care, cared for. A name blazoned in red paint on the side, which reads Nimbus. And you can see a rubber tube attached to the rear where a gnome woman appears to be making adjustments. And as you approach, she turns and gives you an energetic wave. And she says, Hiya! Greetings! Did Balazar send ya? Um... Oh no. Anyone know what the hell this is? It's a really weird boat. It's a really the, weird boat. This is the Nimbus! Hi, it's you've got a very weird, weird boat. Well, it's not a boat, it's a, it's a gyrocopter. I take it, uh, judging by your faces, none of you have flown before? <laughs> Not on purpose. Uh, Uruk did no. take it upon himself to toss me off a cliff once. Well, don't worry, you'll be you'll be safe. Uh, uh, anyone good with heights? Because I am not. This is about as high up as I usually get. Yeah. I don't even have a flight form. Okay. Um, uh, is there a, a place where I can sit where I cannot see out the the glass enclosure? I'm afraid it's it's windows all around it on the inside. You'll you'll have to see the view. Oh, There's terrifying. not much I can do about that. Okay. But you know, some people pay me for for tours of and places like that. You know, it, it's quite nice. I can't imagine doing that. Um, you know, birds belong in the air. I think uh, we ourselves belong quite firmly on the ground. Ah, that's hogwash. I can fly no problem. Illivos, can you speak some sense into this? I'm gonna, just going to glance at the gyrocopter and go, nope. I should probably just get on, to be honest. I was very curious why you said only two hours, because the actual travel time, if you go by... And she just mutters <laughs> off about travel <laughs> How time. How far it three. actually is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Uh, well. I think it looks fun. All right, Ilivos never says that. I guess we're going aboard. Does he have fun? Sure. Just like turning around oh, looking no. at the crew. Does he <laughs> well, know what that is? <laughs> Actually, as you... threat of imminent death. <laughs> yeah, why not? Go on. Sharp pointy, pointy rocks at the bottom. Bring it mm. on. <laughs> All right, yeah, just I guess we we'll get you... on a gyrocopter. Well, actually, just before you get on, uh, Cherry says, hang on one second. Um, I have to explain a little something about the trip. So I can't actually land on the island. I know. You'll have to... There's, a, there's some belts here that you'll have to wear, and if you look inside, there's some hooks on the roof, 
What you'll need to do, I'll be hovering over the, over the jungle, and you'll essentially rope down to the forest or the jungle floor. It's All safe, right, it's easy. Lines. Haylock did it yesterday, and no problem. We're going to dangle. How far up in the air, relying on these hooks? I mean, it, it depends. Normally about 40, 50 feet. I will have you know, we are made of flesh and bone, both of which smash what? easily at that height. I know, you you will be slowly lowered on the rope. Don't worry, all you gotta do is just attach yourself and jump. I'm so it's, unbelievably You're, you're slowly lowered. Okay. 500 gold. 500 gold, crew, 500 gold. All right? <sighs> Mm. All right, um, Angelus, will you catch me if if we fall? You, uh, you could just it's it'll be fine, I think. And right. she's like in her brain going yeah. through the ratio of how many if if you fell at whatever speed and <laughs> and then you could land on your it's side. It's a rate of and then African can... swallow or European <laughs> swallow. <laughs> wait, wait, are you sure you don't have a flight form? Oh god. Mm -mm. All right, all right, all aboard fine. then. Ilavos, still excited. Um, up until the ropes, yeah. Why not? Right. All right, well, give us the, um, the tour, I suppose, so at least when we die, we'll have great memories to live on with. I just oh, no, we... back to Dro and say, I am curious to watch your Rick get on this thing, though. So. <laughs> we might break the rope. I hope we both fit. Well, I just want to double check, is everyone getting on board to oh, all, yeah. like, attach the belt? Yeah, yeah with Wonderful. so oh, much yeah. trepidation, but <laughs> yes! Okay. Um, so, you enter the gyrocopter, and uh, Cherry follows behind. She has mirrored goggles now pulled across her eyes, and a small leather cap is fixed tightly to her head. As she walks through the cabin, she gives each of you a, a nod and a wee pat just to, to reassure you. And you also notice there's a small, thin cheroot now tightly grasped in her teeth as she fixes you all with a, a tight grin. And then she makes her way to the cockpit off the vehicle and sits down. And if you'll just bear with me a second. Bearing with. Is this, does this thing, like, is this like a normal helicopter where it's got, like, feet it sits on? Yeah, like, yeah. Legs? Uh, I, yes. I a, a Are we getting helicopter crap. sounds? Oh <laughs> my god. I love it. Just to help you feel it's immersed. Incredible. Um, so after a moment, you begin to hear a mechanical rumble, and you feel a shake as the contraption begins to come alive. With a hiss of steam, the doors either side of you close, and then the rumble increases, and shadows rapidly flicker outside the cabin as the rotors pick up speed. Then, with a sudden lurch that pitches you down into your seat, the gyrocopter rises much quicker than you anticipated. You get a brief look at Rancoa to your right, um, its intricate skyline, but with sudden speed, the vehicle turns and banks to the northwest towards the Thundering Isle. Oh. So, is there anything you would like to do on your journey? Panic? I don't know. <laughs> Look outside and then panic <laughs> about being this far up in the air. I was gonna say I would like for if we say said the like the feet of a helicopter, I'd like a roof instead of getting inside this tiny helicopter to be grabbing on for two hours. Feet. I, I don't think like, Cherry would let like that. Hanging it, hanging his arms on him or whatever. <laughs> no, Arup, get inside. Get inside. It's a long way. God, need your strength for later. I'm claustrophobic. No, get in. Get, we're squishing. We're this squishing in. This is a good time to uh, learn that. Uh, we're getting inside. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, and we're just squishing together. In, like. <laughs> it's only two hours. We've got this. Edgelus is like window side. <laughs> Fully plastered <laughs> to the window. Just. What, what do you see, Edgelus? <laughs> well, do you remember that one time about, remember two years ago when we took care of the, uh, the. You know, the thieving goblin that we had that one issue with, and that's how Dro. we met. Dro. What about Dro? Yeah, I've, I now see the I see the camp where we met them. It's, it's uh -huh. still burned, not been taken. Like she's just reciting. Two like, years, it's still just burned, huh? Well, that's... Nobody wants to buy in the developer of that neighborhood. I don't know why. That's well, you know, there's still a lot of murder that was done there. I suppose <laughs> haunted landscape more than likely now. Um, mm. Mm. I'm gonna lean out and and see if I can look down. I'm gonna roll it. Cons, do I get? Okay, a ten. I think I hold my stomach here. It'll be, I'll be okay. 
We'll be all right. Not good with heights, though. Sabaz has okay. found out really quickly. Not good with heights. Sure. Um, so yeah, well, after the initial shock wears off, you find your kind of senses rapidly fade to the background, the, the whir of the engines um, kind of lose the initial fear factor, uh, and you can see clear blue water passing beneath you at a blistering pace. You see about the occasional small vessel and distant island, um, but the journey will be relatively uneventful. Um, it is so. like just feeding or handing snacks back to Dro. <laughs> They give me they give me peanuts. <laughs> they gave me peanuts. Oh my god. Alright. Ah, uh, Cherry! Do you make this trip often? You hear a voice call out over a, a speaker in the back cabin um Hells. that just says uh, yesterday was my first time and I quickly learned why they call it the Thundering Isle. Oh, do go on. Why? Oh, well, it's got these, um, these big tall peaks in the center, constant lightning storm. So I'll have to land you a bit far out. Oh, Just so lovely. we don't crash or anything like that. Right. Um, you know, when I was asking for to live an, an interesting life, I didn't have flying through the air and lightning storm listed on those things. 500 gold. 500 gold, 500 gold, 500 gold, 500 gold. Uh, Cherry, <laughs> how far out are we landing? Um, it'll probably be about half a day's journey from the mining camp. Half a damn day, half a damn day. All right, well, take us in then, deeper into the heart of darkness. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, the time passes, and eventually you can see the Thundering Isle uh, come into view. And you actually hear uh, Cherry's voice call out once again over the speaker, just saying, We're about three minutes out, so I'd get yourselves ready, maybe you hook yourselves up. And if you look up, you can see the hooks where you would attach them to the, the belt she's given you. Just, just, just right on then, huh? Okay. Hmm. Um, so yeah, you can see the Thundering Isle lap rapidly coming into view as it as it rises out of the Azure Sea. Its sheer cliffs and rugged rock formations create an imposing wall against the relentless assault of the crashing waves. Dominating the heart of the island's verdant expanse are the two towering peaks, and you can see there's a rotating ring of black storm clouds covering them, and flashes of lightning certainly give reason to the island's name. There's lush foliage almost across the entire island. Um, it cascades down the sides of the peaks and, and joins the vast canopy. There are several rivers that crisscross and break up the the jungle and lend an almost patchwork look to the island. And once you're kind of on final approach, Cherry's voice will call out once more and say, See that flat rock ahead? That's the Devil's Butte. And you can, if you look out the window, you can see the flat top tower of rock. But eventually, the gyrocopter begins to slow and descend towards the roof of the jungle. With a hiss, the side doors open, and a strong gust of wind from the rotors blows into the cabin. What would you like to do next? Great. Uh, Uruk, you mind taking the plunge first? Make sure you're all bound up, though. U Uruk is all ready. Just, just ready to go. <laughs> as soon as the door opened, he just like is already going. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. So what to do? If you want to make an athletics check, just to make sure, I would. It's pretty easy, but just to make sure nothing goes oh, drastically good. wrong. Yeah, sure. And you can all just make that now as well, just to to save some time. Oh. Okay. 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 Eight, uh, 18's okay. Yeah, Uruk with an eighteen. Sabaz, 13, Ilovos, 19, Edulus, 15, and then Dro. Wow, we actually, we all rolled over 10. There it is, Dro Ooh. with it. That's, that's hey. still, it's still, it's still all right. It's still all right. Still all right. Say with the, okay. the, the, the gyrocopter lurches as, as Uruk d jumps out first. It kind of rocks a little bit from side to side um, before the rest of you follow um, at various points when you can overcome the initial fear. Um, and as you jump, you feel a sudden lurch 
before the rope slows your descent, and with speed you are rapidly lowered through the thick carpet of leaves, and the sounds of the ropers are muffled and dulled above you. You pass through the shafts of sunlight, and with a solid thump, you find yourselves on the floor of the jungle. I hated all of that, <laughs> and yet could not escape it. Ugh. That was. That, that's how we're gonna get back, too. Oh, stop. That was an experience. Hmm. I suppose one should have experiences throughout life that you've not had before. Just, uh, <laughs> didn't want it to be well, that I hope one. we only have to do that one more time. One more. Just to get out of here. 500 gold, right? 500 <laughs> gold. Uruk! Not a penny less. What do you see? Right now he is, uh, he is on his knees, scooping up the dirt on the ground and Dirt. bringing it to his face and, <laughs> and then rubbing it all over his all right well he doesn't see much i see everything all i'm right. one with the forest okay well i'm glad someone is do i do i instantly see any uh any sort of wildlife or prey in the area well why don't you traps? make a perception check yeah for okay me. let's yeah. let's do that come on uruk our hunter let's go no. Six. <laughs> Six. With so dirt. you, when, when you rub the mud in your eyes, some of it does block your vision, um, and it prevents you from seeing anything too detailed. But for the rest of you looking around, you do find yourself in an untamed expanse of towering trees with gnarled roots that rise towards the canopy above. Their leaves form a dense emerald ceiling that blots out much of the sunlight, casting dappled shadows upon the uneven ground. The jungle's symphony of life is almost deafening. A cacophony of bird song, insect, chir insect chirps, and animal calls blend together to create an orchestra of nature. But visibility is limited, distance is obscured by the tangle of vegetation, and it's a foreboding depth that seems to devour everything. Hmm. Well, this kind of sucks. Um. <laughs> a half a day's trek then. Uh, Uruk, could you set the pace for us? Towards the yeah. Devil's Butte, please. If there is a path, I will find it. Just <laughs> not so quickly that we can't keep up. Oh, oh right, he's already gone. Looking for a path. I don't know. <laughs> he Why don't you make finding things? He, he does make, love uh, finding things. I wish I was that make... passionate about anything. To be honest. <laughs> oh. You can make a survival check for me here. Okay. You know, God, a he seems to okay. at least enjoy his work. He does. Sure. <laughs> Um, well, I would say you, you find the odd animal trail that uh, eases the travel, but most of the time you're kind of pushing through the, the thick vegetation and the, the terrain. There's patches where it's muddy and there's tangled roots and even the occasional slippery rock where someone almost loses their footing. Um, you feel the heat and moisture of the jungle that begins to prove taxing and before long you're all um, feeling a pervasive dampness that seeps into all your clothing and armor and the insects buzz ceaselessly around your face. On that topic of work, I don't like it, you know. I don't think anyone really does, but, um, you know, I like what's in it. Right, and Uruk's definitely shown us here. It's a, a chance to find yourself. He seems to have developed his own reality, you know, for himself. If not for us, and, well, what no other man can ever know. <laughs> uh, they can only see the mere sounds show like of it. Sounds like he's manifesting. I hope so. True. If he Maybe he agrees, and she's, like, hit a leaf and is, like, wafting us like an old church fan style. <laughs> 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 Maybe you can find us some less humidity. Uh, DM, do we? Can we just keep like an active look around? I don't want to get dropped on by any forest predators if we can help it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you can all make a perception check if you like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to percept. Boop. Thirteen for Sabaz. Twenty-two. There you go, nice. Elavos. Ten Let's... for me. 18 for Angelus. 10. 10. Still eating the peanuts that I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> crunch, oh crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Uruk's supposed to be this big, dangerous hunter, and he's the worst so far. Man, he's on the trail. He's got mud in his eyes, hasn't he? As an insult to injury, I do have a, 
uh, the natural explorer feat <laughs> with forest being my <laughs> being my preferred environment. Amazing. Okay. Um, oh. oh, I would actually say, um, Edulis and Illavos, um, when you all find yourself stepping onto what seems to be a, a used animal trail, you actually hear um, a little bit in the distance the sound of snapping branches and, and rustling vegetation. Um, kind of just further ahead. I feel Edulis would be empathetic to Uruk, clearly trying to cover up his failures at this point, and she's going <clears> to... <throat> Uruk, did you hear that? That way? Somewhere. Uh, yeah, I yeah, of, of, I mean, of course you, I, of course I, I heard. I, I, yeah. Um, sounded like... I was crack, just trying not to startle of, anyone. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Um, did anybody else hear it? I didn't hear anything. Not a thing. I heard something, but... I mean, there's a lot of somethings out here to hear. I'll just gesture around at the cacophony of animal noises. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, did it sound dangerous? Well, as you're all kind of standing around talking, it does seem to be getting closer. Um, and you begin to notice in the distance some of the the, the bushes and and brush of the jungle being pushed aside. Uh, Edulis is going to slowly lower Dro down off of her. All right, I um, it's big enough to move the brush and trees. Hiding, hiding, everyone. No, not, hiding? not quite the trees. It's it's just the the grass and oh, the all right, the good. bushes and things like that. Uh, should we take cover? Mm, oh. I think so. All right. Yeah. Uh, all Eric, right. Eric, you want to keep an eye out on it? Into the underbrush. I'm famously sneaky, so let's go for it. Uh, so am I. <laughs> uh, Ten. Okay. Yeah, if you just want to quickly make a stealth check. Ten for Sabaz. For Sabaz. Uh, that is mm. nine for me. That's a five for Edulis. Oh, we're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> Oric, are you just are you just out there? I I don't I don't. He just stands there. Hard, it's up to you. Hard, Eric, hard if you want to just stand there, hard to say that I would Oric. ever. You know what? Oric. I think I. You know what? I think that he would stealth because he thinks he's stealthy. Never mind. Right. He, okay. okay. He would totally try to prowl his way through the forest, <laughs> uh, even though he's. Like 800 pounds or whatever. Or whatever. He's or whatever. <laughs> oh, he is 20, the whatever. Though. Look at that. <laughs> Nat 20. <laughs> okay, Edel's, well. Uh, so wait, you, uh, we're stealth ain't. Wait. Uh, it disappears. Man, this might. Let's see. 25. Okay, I'm, good. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm hiding behind. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm still kind of like. Like, I'm not Shut hiding away, anywhere Uruk. else. Yeah. I'm still just kind of like. I've just crept back behind Edgeless. Angelus is okay. like holding a leaf, basically. Like, yeah. yeah. I actually make okay. it to the bush finer. You just see me smoking a cigarette there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so, um, Dro and Uric, you guys essentially become the jungle and, and disappear from sight. But the rest of you are caught at kind of various points of trying to hide, and this whatever it is rapidly approaches and something breaks through the dense brush in front of you and standing before you is a boar. It fixes its beady eyes towards you and its breath comes in rapid huffs, but it seems to just fix you with a gaze for a moment. Uh, Endulus? A little, little maybe, maybe speak this one down, huh? Edulis, tell it to fuck off. Tell it to maybe leave us alone. Edulis doesn't have speak with animals, so... Oh! How do you not... What, like, you, Don't you have that, I like, speech, you would. speech with bird and leaf or whatever? Oh, um... Ed Shh. And she's just gonna, like... What do druids do? <laughs> just step I, thought, I thought druids were particularly the... We Me handle too. the boars in the underbrush type. <laughs> I like Can I she like not, plants. like, turn I into like a plants. boar and talk to him? <laughs> I thought you were a fauna druid. <laughs> Why is my reputation being so questioned right now? We have to deal with war. We just hold you to a very high standard. Indeed, we have so much faith in you. <laughs> she just panics. <laughs> you, you can totally do it. Ah, yes, yes, I, I, I remember a story about speech of beast and, and leaf. <laughs> Ability to communicate in a limited manner with beasts, plants, and vegetation. Oh, true, true, true. Sorry. Drew it first time. Faith in what? you. It's your it's your Furbolgian heritage. Okay. Um <laughs> <laughs> you got this. Say that up. 
<laughs> you didn't make that. I would never lie. Lying is abhorrent. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. You feel like that would be pretty it. funny if he made that up and then she tries though. <laughs> Drew, uh, <laughs> no, um, Edulis is basically. I'm not going to speak to it, but I would like to basically. I maybe nature check to see if it's panic or aggressive. Basically, if it's running yeah, or hunting. I would say you could make either a nature or an animal handling check at advantage to, okay. to figure out at advantage. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 22. Okay, 22. Yeah, you get the sense from this the board that it's not really... It sees you there, and it's, it's kind of bewildered by your presence, but it's not being outwardly hostile, and you get the impression if you just stay back for a little while longer, it'll probably just move on. Okay, she's going to basically divulge that information. She's like, just don't, no fast movements, guys. I, look, I, I think it's clearly just skittish by something. I, I don't think it expects to see us. We didn't expect to see it. Excuse us, Boar. Sorry about this. Yes, this is our um, trail now, Boar. <laughs> okay, the boar, <laughs> heeding your words, goes off back into the jungle, and you once more hear it crash and break through that was before close. the sounds of that disappear. We almost uh, got bored to death. Huh? I'm All right. <laughs> I'm pretty entertained. I, I, She's like collecting. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Drew. I appreciate that. I can always depend on you for a cheap laugh. So... <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pat Edgeless on the, on the uh, shoulder and be like, that was... That was really... It's good. Really good. It's good. I thought you said you weren't good with animals. I just, I had a cat one time. Um, where did Uruk go? Uruk, uh, <laughs> you can come out now. <laughs> at the, at, right at that moment, uh, kind of locking his legs around a tree branch, he like flops down upside down <laughs> out of a tree. Oh. And then out of flavor, I'm pretty sure the tree branch breaks under his weight. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. <clears throat> he's, he's so surprising everywhere at all times he's so surprisingly good and bad at things you know ah uruk trail let's let's go before we uh, this way find another <laughs> boar walks in whatever <laughs> way he points hmm. sure. well i think you all know that he is going in roughly the right direction just just for your own sanity uh, um <laughs> so you press on um, and once again, you push through the treacherous terrain. There's thick vines hanging down from the jungle canopy around you, waiting to snag the unwary. But you travel for, I don't know, about an hour and a half or so. Um, is there anything any of you would like to do whilst traveling, or are you just kind of passing the time? I'm trying to... Sabaz has a, a habit of just talking all of the time. Um, hmm. So would just be talking. About anything Sabaz and everything. Or Joel. Yes, <laughs> I am known to talk far too much. So, okay, that's all. I just be talking to whoever would listen. Yeah. I think Edulis is just collecting. If there's bits we can find, if there's basically edible food or like berry bush or anything like that. She's just kind of gathering and collecting, and then also handing some to like Drew for every time. She's like, oh, okay, four for me, one for you. I'm just chilling. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm just, I've just cemented myself. Uh, He's getting like uh, leaf fanned and fed berries by his <laughs> mouth, basically. <laughs> but I will reciprocate. I'll, I'll also have like a little, little leaf thing, a and I'll, I'll kind of fan like... you as well. Just like, <laughs> nice. But, oh, God, it's so hot out here. Oh, mm. oh, oh, are we there yet? Yeah, this is awful. Aruk will be looking for every single feather in the forest, and then after everyone will ask, "Is this the one?" Every time. <laughs> is this? Is this it? Is this the one? <laughs> God. The next time that we take a job, can it be somewhere else, less humid? Please. I never knew I could sweat from some of these places. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's going to be a massive case of sw just swamp butt all across the party. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so you guys yeah, travel for about an hour and a half before um, you find a small stream um, that you think you could sit by and, and catch your breath if you'd like to, or you can, you can continue to press on. I... I think I would like to like soak some cloth and like, like drape around my neck or something. Take a minute to kind of like. You're not that heavy, Drew, but it's hot. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Do I have to get down? You just walk maybe for the next 30 minutes or so. But my feet. <laughs> I'm like, what if I get lost? Y'all are so big. Okay. okay just for I five minutes so... then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, so the gentle sound of the running water does provide a brief respite from the cacophony of animal and insect sounds that permeate, permeate the air. Um, however, as you're all just kind of taking a rest, um, actually, I don't think you'd even hear it. Um, Joel, oh. or, well, um, Sabaz, all of a sudden you feel a sharp pain in your shoulder. Um, as something is coming whipping out of the, the bushes around you, and it looks like there's a crossbow bolt embedded in your shoulder. Ah, uh, alright. Um, we're under attack! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that, you've been shot. I've been shot! Oh, yeah. Fire back, okay? then! Yeah. Quit standing around, fire! fire, fire I don't know! <laughs> Whipping around, fuck, someone... Uru, get this shit out of me! The hunt is on! Oh, God. <laughs> He's off. He's got to find him. Agilis, get the <laughs> crossbow right. bolt out of my shoulder! I'll pull the crossbow bolt out of the shoulder. Oh, can we do oh, that? Actually... Oh. Oh. Sorry, yeah, go go ahead first, Drogs. I think you were going to have to do a perception check, were you? Yes, obviously, like, does yeah. any, any of us yeah, want to like, paint? Yeah. You can all make a perception check, because um, I, th I think you would all kind of rapidly anything. look around. <laughs> Dro five, Sabaz nineteen. Oh, it's all right. Uruk's on the hunt okay. with an eight. Um, <laughs> oh, Ilvo seventeen, Angela seven. Yeah. Okay, um, Sabaz. I I would say an Ilvo. Let's say you were standing near Sabaz. You saw where the crossbow bolt came out from, um, yeah. and very far in the distance, you heard kind of a thump, um, almost as if something fell out of a tree afterwards. Um, but other than that, you can't see anything else in the jungle. There's no creatures approaching or, or armed people or anything like that. Uh, now, who's helping uh, Sabaz with a crossbow bolt in his well, shoulder? I'm pulling it out of his shoulder. But... Okay. Do you I feel like make I wasn't action? looking because I'm like pulling medicine out to cover the... Oh, God. God. <laughs> um, I was going to actually ask you to make an arcana check for me. Sure thing. My specialty. Oh, 15. All right. 15, okay. okay. Um, for a brief moment when you approach the shoulder, you almost see this faded green light seep from the bolt into Sabaz's shoulder that kind of just rapidly dissipates. Hmm. I'll relay that to hmm? Sabaz and be like, hmm. what, 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 what well, is, someone is, just hmm? went in his shoulder. What does hmm mean? In my oh, shoulder? Sort of a, yeah, the crossbow bolt. Yeah, like bolt. a green light. Huh? It's gone now, though. Oh, yeah, you're very smart. Do you want me to take this out or not? Oh, right, the green light. Yeah, take it out, but tell me about this green light. What does it look like? Well, I don't know. It's in your shoulder, mate. And with uh, that, I'll pull the crossbow oh! bolt out of your shoulder. Okay. Um, oh, and after some, I, I actually forgot to roll the, the damage for it as well. Sorry. Oh, I was too excited. Fine. Um, Forget it. So from that, you t it's only four piercing damage you take from it. Though. Yeah, but what about that green light? Ugh. How you feeling? Feeling any greener? Do I look greener? Does, does my look purple greener? has my purple become green? He he, he looks no different. Nope. Uh, I guess it's fine then. Is there a hole in my cape? Uh, if it's over your shoulder, then I'll have a look. Yes, there is a hole in your cape. Oh. There's also a hole in your shoulder. I'd be more worried about that. I suppose. Uh, Edulis, can you take a look, please? It seems that Ilivos has seen some kind of green light has gone into my body. Any? Edulis is thoughts? like, I'm gonna roll. Yes. Um, can I roll medicine basically to investigate what's happening? Whether it's like a poison that maybe I can sure. see. Sure. Yeah, you or can. Something. You can make a medicine check. But she's like lifting your arm, and she's like, mm. ah, ah, tender, 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 tender. Mm. Okay. Yep. Mm. Limited mobility. Anyone? A medicine check. Okay. So. Uh, Looking closely at it, you see no trace of poison on the the head of the bull or in the wound or, or anything like that. Um, and I assume you, you probably want to bandage it up in some way, yeah. um, which you can do quite well with the, the 21, and it yeah. provides support she's, to you, Sabaz. She's going to uh. explain to you, Sabaz, um, I don't see, there's no traces of poison, there's no traces of anything, I don't, I mean, it's just like a basic crossbow wound. Maybe it's just the t tobacco he got. Stop Dro, green light. Uruk, did you did you see anything from that direction? I'll just point to where the bolt came from, just see if they 
noted anything or could um i i i saw nothing Ar Aruk is stomping back and forth and he's so big that every time he like walks he breaks branches and then immediately turns around <laughs> to, see, to see the branch <laughs> to behind see him. him yeah our master hunter everyone uh like a dog chasing its tail. He's he's swinging a he's swinging a sword wildly into the underbrush. <laughs> Didn't he say that the jungle was his domain? I Something believe, like that. Yeah, that was that. That was. I feel like that's why we brought it. That on. was a thing he said. Uh, uh twice. I think. Just I think. Nervous. I can relate. Fine. All right. Eyes peeled for it more. Happens to everyone. Crossbow bolt shenanigans. Um. DM, I would like to duck through the underbrush in the direction that it came from and investigate the thumping sound. Okay, sure. What did you roll for your perception check? Sorry, it was a, a 19. 19. Okay, yeah, you, you'd be able to... Um, yeah. Um, okay, so you locate the source, but why don't you make an investigation check to, to check the area? Can I check? Are the rest of you following Sabaz, or are you all staying Yeah, I'd wonder over with Sabaz. I'm okay. going to follow with just to... I'm going to climb down from... Uh, from Edgeless and kind of from your waddle perch. my way through everything. Yeah, like a <laughs> halfling sized sweat patch on her back now. <laughs> twenty five. This is a good one to get nat, nat twenty, 20. on Joel. I'll be honest. Yes, <laughs> nat twenty. Tell me what I see. Okay. So, um, thoroughly looking around, um, you see that it looks to be a spot where something, a large creature, you would assume jumped from a tree onto the forest floor. Um, you can see a pair of large three-toed footprints um, that embed themselves into the, the forest floor and have rapidly continued on to another tree ahead. Um, and that's where they stop once they've reached this tree. Um, in addition, you look closely at the tree where you assume this creature jumped out of, um, and you can see what looks to be places where there may have been four or five handholds in place at once, if that makes sense. Hold here. Uh, Uruk, you've got your boots on, don't you? Uh, bo boots? Uh, he doesn't wear shoes. Yeah, can I, I want to look down at <laughs> Uruk's toes and see if they have three. I don't know how many toes he has. Uruk, how many toes do you have? <laughs> Let's, let's, uh, let's find out. <laughs> How many toes does a toes. crocodile have? <laughs> uh, three. Yeah, that's fine. Three? Oh my god. Yeah, sure. Uruk, could you the, come the here? The footprints are noticeably bigger than Uruk's. Okay, yeah, I, I want to just, like, get, close, his, you can get his foot close to this one. All right, not him. Um, I would like to call everyone's attention to, A, this here print. Big. Bigger than you, Uruk, though, same amount of toes. And, uh, it goes that direction. You see the handholds there? Look. I think we're being stalked in some way. There's some creature out here. Maybe the lizard folk that were mentioned. Hmm. Do lizard folk get this big? Don't know. Hmm. Depends on what they eat. Can we follow the trail for an, until well, I lose like it? I said, I it, it, it leads to, to a tree. Mm -hmm. Um... And you could probably infer, I guess, but again, you did roll that nat 20, so you could probably tell that it looked like the creature climbed up this tree, yeah. um, and that's kind of where you lose the trail. Uh, looks like he climbed up. Uh, do I see anything in the tree? Looking up into it? Uh, no, looking in the into the canopy, it looks fairly bare and empty. Art, uh... In this jungle, are the, the canopies close enough together that it is feasible for a skilled creature to travel uh, amongst the yes. treetops? Okay. Yes. All right. How tall up is, uh, how, I guess, how high up into the tree? Um, I guess the, like the roof of it is probably about, up. um, it's probably about 30 to 40 feet okay. of a climb. Wow. Good height. Okay. okay. Well, whatever it was, clambered this tree and then at least didn't touch the ground over here again. His prints are easy enough to find, as big as the damn thing is. Hmm. Green stuff, huh? I suppose we just keep an eye out. Perhaps we've stumbled into someone's territory. I'll keep an eye on the back as we continue to move forward. I'll try to mm. see if I can 
Make sure if we're not being followed. I'm not too sure. I don't even know if we're going the right direction. Oh, Uruk has definitely got us in the right direction, don't you? Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> he's looking around like... There's no idea where, uh, where this guy went. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Just keep us on the trail to get us to the job. I've taken more wounds than a crossbow bolt before. I'll be fine. Okay. Uh, so, you head on. And you occasionally see the top of the Devil's Butte through the the tops of the canopy. Um, but And so, despite the hard terrain, you are steadily getting closer. However, next you approach a steep upward slope, and your breathing becomes rapid as you ascend. Occasionally, someone briefly loses their footing on the muddy ground, but eventually you reach the top. However... From your vantage, you look deeper down into the jungle, and something catches your eye. There looks to be a figure tied to a nearby tree. Alive or dead? Hey, why don't you make a perception check? Okay! Oh, I see something that direction. Oh, 22 for Sabaz. 22, yeah. Uh, Dro 7, Ilavos 11. I see nothing. Edula's nine. I have sweat in my eyes. <laughs> Fearless tracker Uruk. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh. Okay, I would say it's probably just yourself who can spot the Sabaz. This figure is clearly dead, but even at this distance, you can tell they are missing their head. Uh, all right, pause, everyone. Um, no need to alarm or anything, but I'll just kind of gesture slowly. You see, there's a humanoid form there. Quite clearly missing their head. Do they have feathers on their shoulder? Uh, DM, do they have feathers on their shoulder? Um, you did roll pretty high. They do. They have bright, colorful feathers on their shoulder. Edulis, you remember? And the longbow strapped across Edulis is going to like describe like a kingfisher yep. feather. Like blue and <laughs> Edulis, yep. yellow at the tips. Mm. And... Edulis, um, yes, quite a... Uh, a bounty of them on the shoulder and a longbow. I believe we found we our found Haylock. contact. All right. Um, we should probably take a look, see if we can't glean any information from the body. Uh, Uruk, could you get us over there quickly, safely, and quietly? Hmm. <laughs> Best of your two, ability, my friend. Pick uh, two. <laughs> two. Best of your ability, my friend. He will. He will try to get to cut a path to this body and in a in an efficient manner. Dro, could you keep your eyes to the canopy, please? Muted, sir. I can do that. I, I. Nudges, Dro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's move then. And uh, I guess we stalk forward carefully to the body. Sure. Yeah. Um. You you approach and um. Yeah, like I said, it it looks to be a, a headless humanoid figure. Um. There's bright feathers on on one of its shoulders. It looks to be some sort of um homemade pauldron and a, a longbow strapped across their shoulder. They are missing their head, um, but you can see carved into the bark of the tree where I guess the stump of their neck is. There is a word, um, but it is in Infernal. Does anyone speak Infernal? I'm half devil, so yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you can tell that the word says pray. A Y or E Y? E Y. Okay, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> be a little more threatening if it was the yeah. other way, wouldn't it? Uh, <laughs> pray or be an illivos. <laughs> you're good with wounds. Um, can you discern oh. whether or not the head was the killing blow or just oh. the punishment? I thought you were going to ask me to heal that for a second. <laughs> no, um, no, I do know some limitations. Well, I'll have a look, I suppose. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I I'll, I'll inspect the words. Beyond healing. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, right. keep the words to myself for a moment until we maybe discern the, uh, the cause of death. Sure. Uh, do you want to make a medicine check for me then, Ilavos? Uh, Fifteen. Nice. 
15. Okay. Um, looking across the body, um, you inspect it for wounds. Um, you do find several small puncture wounds in the abdomen. Um, they look very similar in size to the diameter that um, are what hit Sabaz. Hmm. We might have found our uh, fellow with the crossbow. Looks like they've been hit by whatever got you. Any I'll point out the wounds on their abdomen. Green tinting there, or...? I mean, you're welcome to have a peek in, but I can't see any. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I just... Right, so, you see this bit here. It seems that the head was perhaps claimed as some kind of trophy. This word here in Infernal, uh, it says, Prey. E-Y, not A-Y. Meaning that, um... Perhaps our contact was being hunted. Huh. Lizard folk, or what are we thinking? I don't know many lizard folk that know Infernal. That's a good point. Um. What does speak Infernal that's not, you know, tieflings and that? Devils, in general. All right. I'm not sure why a devil would be in the jungle. They tend to be more deal makers than hunters, in my experience. Well, I just feel bad for her. And I think Edulis is gonna try to uh, tie the, take the body down, like untie body. Sure, yeah, you can you can do that no problem. You can you notice that actually peering at the the cords of vines that have been used to string up the body, they seem to have been done with expert precision. The the knots are incredibly tight, and you have to use a small knife to to free them. Um, but eventually you, you get the body loose, and yeah, are you just placing it on the ground, or...? I think some sort of semblance of rest, like she might try to cover it with leaves or anything, but she will look at Dro and be like, I know you're going to. Well, we should check the pockets what? anyways, right? What? I know you're- I know you're- it's fine. But just go ahead and do it before I, you know, bury her, cause... Oh, <laughs> yes, and- Oh, oh, also, oh, well... Of course. What am I, a grave robber? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm gonna start piddling around in the pockets. Running the pockets, sure. if you will. Yeah, why don't you make an investigation check for me, Drew? All righty. Got a 21. Ooh, nice. okay. <laughs> you guys have been really so well, actually, so well, far. Well, we have, we have Uru to balance us out, okay? That's what we've gotten so far today. Okay. Our poor hunter. So, poor thing. Um, Draw, you find three things of interest. Um, first of all, you find four gold pieces, um, just within the, the pocket of the body. Um, you find a map, but it seems to be completely ruined. Uh, you can get a vague sense that it's off the, the whole archipelago, not, ju not just this island, but it's bloodstained and sodden and damp, and you can't really read much information from it. However, you do find a journal um, written in common, and flicking through it, it seems to be various... The first uh, few chapters are just various scouting reports, details of... Um, creatures that have been seen across various islands and things like that. But flicking to the most recent entries, it seems to indicate that um, this person received a job uh, to head to the Thundering Isle. They arrived. Um, they reported being uh, struck by an arrow, or a, a bolt, sorry. Um, and then um, that seems to be the last entry. I'm going to kind of... Yeah, I'm assuming everybody's relatively close, but I'm gonna kind of tell everybody, kind of bring it in. Uh, can we, uh, guy? So, uh, yeah, this isn't really telling us too much. We don't already know, but the last entry was after they got shot. So they, yeah. Uh, Is there a date? Uh, when he got got shot, um, specifically. Just like you. Oh. So, seems like, yeah, they took the job just like we did, and so, you know, clearly this is Balazar's, uh, yeah, this is, uh, other than that, not much, this is, here's a map, but it's, this is useless, covered in blood. Edulis will take the map, see if she can figure anything out, but clearly. Yeah, it is, it's pretty far gone at this point, um, yeah. it's mostly just a, a bloodstained rag. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, not much. So, 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 so that journal Cut these four coins away. <laughs> uh, doesn't uh, doesn't specify anything after getting hit with a a a single bolt. This is this wasn't something they wrote as they were punctured with these many bolt-sized wounds. Uh, I mean, it kind of seems like maybe they tried to leave some account before they expired. Right, um, right. Shed this mortal coil. Uh, <laughs> gone to the upper room. No, I get, I get it, all right? Dro, I understand. I, I get it. Or the lower one. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, Dro, yes, you're not making it any better. Uh, so Baz at this point is, is in a bit of a panic, um, <laughs> looking about the treetops to see if there's anything. I mean, you see the occasional bird flittering um, between the, the canopies, um, but you don't see any armed crossbow wielding things yeah. looking back or anything like that. He starts to mutter to himself. His soul was mad. Being alone in the wilderness, it had looked within itself, and by heavens, I tell you, it had gone mad. You're, you're fine, Sebez. You're fine. You're not alone. Right. Uh, it. Right. Yes, right, of course. Um, well, this is our contact. So uh, that's not good. Trying to find the mining camp, I think. I mean, she was supposed to be our contact, but we're going to have to do it on our own now, I guess. There's still half a day's travel, are we not? Well, now, you've traveled about half of that, so about, I don't know, a quarter of a day's travel. <laughs> did we, Uruk, did we make it a quarter of a day towards the destination? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he seems you confident. For <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, looking for that confidence, all right? Uh, yeah. Well, um, uh, Uruk is actually on all fours right now, sniffing around the area, trying mm -hmm. to find a scent of anybody who was a part of this struggle or fight. Sure, um, why don't you make uh, an investigation check? All right. Oh, this is not a great stat. Hey, okay, oh, 18. An 18. Um, looking around the ground, you don't quite see anything. However, you can see um, just off of the small trail you're on, there looks to be an area where several um, branches look to have been broken in kind of quick succession, almost as if a figure was sprinting through um, the underbrush before it, it suddenly stops. And you get, get the impression from the the markings in the ground that it looks like a body may have fallen there. Uh, a different body? N no, I would say you could tell if it's a different body, but there is, it's not that there is a body there, but it's that, like you a know, singular you kingfisher feather. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as feather. obvious as that, but <laughs> <laughs> you may be uh, able to infer that that's where this person might have died. Uh, he will, hmm. uh, like he'll just look back over short. The forest speaks to me. As he's gonna he's gonna try to backtrack where they fell and like go up the path to see if there's any other signs. Like they came, they, um, came from, they came from that way? Like She'll if start, they like, fell this way, he's gonna Sure. So the to... the path that they kinda ran through was on the, the trail. Um or sorry, it's as if they you follow you follow the, the the path through the the brush backwards and it leads to the trail that you guys are on so you okay. get the impression that the that this person may have been on the trail and then suddenly ran into the jungle gotcha yeah. oh, i am not a fan of this i think we should pick up our pace a little what do we do with the body i can't carry a I don't, she do we leave it? Bury it? Is there it? any contact notes of anybody in her journal? I mean, all is just, you know, reports. Maybe she was insured by Balazard. He'll have her contact her. I'm not carrying her. <laughs> I mean, the forest will reclaim her. Need her? No, we don't, but... <laughs> I mean, I've already got her money. I mean, got her. I mean, uh, we have her belongings. Let's take the stuff. bow. We can let people know where she is after. The we'll feathers, maybe, and. I think Edulus will like maybe unhinge the pauldron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Feathered pauldron. Right. Tuck it. <laughs> now let's get a move on before I look like that. So let me know if well, you start feeling all of us. differently, but not your normal, you know, like differently, differently. <laughs> differently, differently, yes. I've been told I am different uh, my whole you know, life. It's hot, but like feverish, you know, but you're, you're extra hot, but you, I mean, you know, you know what I'm it's saying. Hard to tell at this point, but yes, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, so you head on and, um, sorry, where was I on my notes? There we go. Um, we could take a break. About halfway well, through. I was going to suggest that, actually, because the next section, we may get to a bit of the last of a wee while, so... Hey. Um, <laughs> yeah. all right, all right. Why don't we take a, a wee, wee break? Hell yeah. We'll be back in just a second. Alrighty. I'm going to die, guys. I'm, You're going to die. I have hey, been marked. Sure. I'm going to die. Yeah, you got a tracker dot in I have a tracker dot. Like, I think I've been hunters marked. Like, I, I'm, yeah. I'm quite confident I've been hunters marked, and I'm just going to no, die now. Probably not. I would Hope know so. if you were. <laughs> You're right, Uruk. Our master hunter. I would Good definitely now. know. <laughs> You're doing so well in that regard, man. I uh <laughs> Man, this is this is a complete opposite of the last game. Oh my god. My rolls are terrible. It's alright, they're well, warming up. Like, they're I warming can't up. find that, but I'm gonna go find something. I'm gonna I find I will find something. always find something. Yeah. Couldn't tell you if it's what you wanted, but I'm gonna find something. <laughs> I'd be oh worthless. God. It's, something will be found. Goodness <laughs> gracious. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna die. Alright. It may not be this session, right, but I'm quite. sure session two. That'll be it, these, right? These lizard folks heard you talking. They were just like, just that one. Just mm -hmm. this. <laughs> just this guy. Yeah. The other guy's too sweaty. <laughs> God, too sweaty. <laughs> I can be sweaty too. Me, I, I, can, I can sweat. Don't hurt me. <laughs> He's like, I'm trying to sweat harder. <laughs> Clench up real Clench hard. Back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, Woot. we good? All oh, right. Back into death. Welcome back, <laughs> Craig. Don't kill me. Uh, not yet. I don't think. Okay. I'd like to draw it out a little more. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Um, okay. So you guys are are setting off. Um, after leaving um, the body of Haylock. Um, and yeah, you, you press through the jungle. Um, the afternoon begins to get later, and the the sun slowly ro uh, lowers a bit uh, off towards your east. Um, but you can see you're closing in at the base of the Devil's Butte, and you suspect you'll arrive there in about 30 minutes or so. So is there any f preparation things you guys would like to do? Well, it seems that we should probably make camp of some kind. Otherwise, we'll be traipsing through the dark. And uh, I may be able to see in the dark, but I'm pretty sure Dro can't. I, I, I don't like the dark. Right. Um. I would say you have about two hours of light left. Sorry, okay. so it's up to you if you want to keep going now or, or mm. make camp now. Uh, Uruk, uh, find us a spot in about an hour, maybe if you can. Good, a nice little camp spot. <laughs> I will find the best spot. The best. Maybe maybe a defensible one, perhaps with only one entrance, one exit, and plenty of uh, plenty of cover for us. Especially from crossbows. Yeah, uh, uh, perhaps an open clearing with no tall trees nearby. Uh, I don't think we're going to find that. Um, anyways, keep your eyes open for a camping spot next hour. Well, I, I'll say you're 30 minutes from the base of the oh the 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 Devil's Butte. So it's up to you if you want to camp, camp the base, now, or can we just do that? Or you can go there. Yeah. Okay. We can camp at the base. Yeah. So you yeah. push on. Um, as you walk, uh, a light mist begins to descend on the jungle, and it kind of partially obscures your way, but you rapidly approach the, the base of the rock tower. And in fact, as you get a little bit closer, you can hear a distant voice uh, call out. And in fact, does anyone speak Draconic? No. Oh. Nope. That is a negative. No. Okay, but you all clearly hear what sounds like a yell, kind of an angry yell, but you can't infer the words or, or anything like that. Hmm. Uh, 
Um. So I want to, no one, no one. I don't know what they said. Do you know what they said? Do we see anything? Do we see anything? Do we see? No, not quite. No, the the terrain kind of undulates and and things like that. You had to get a bit closer, you think, before you could potentially see the source. I approach carefully, maybe. Okay. Well, you guys wanting to make a stealth check, or are you? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can stealth. Well, I know Illavos loves stealth checks, so let's, oh, it always goes well. Let's do that. Let's gonna roll well oh, twice. Five. Yes. That's a six. Oh, oh my god. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wow, our <laughs> highest roll here is a 14. 14. Nice. Not, yeah. not great. Um, but I will say you are kind of far away from where that noise came, so it's not like you trip over a branch and suddenly the jungle erupts in fury around you or anything like that. <laughs> um, you're just not that quiet. Um, but you get a little bit closer and you, you crest a, a small rise um, and you can actually see what looks to be the mining camp uh, just ahead of you. You can see it kind of sits at the base of the uh, Tower of Rock and that an area of the jungle has been felled and cleared away to make way for a small collection of tents. There's a few crates and barrels and a cart dotted around the area. Um, and you can also see north of the camp there's a cave that's been dug into the base of the, the rock and you would assume that's probably where the mine itself is. Um, but looking around the camp you can see about half a dozen lizard folk um, kind of wandering around. Two of them in particular appear to be um, looking at something in the cart, and that's you can hear kind of raised voices. You suspect that's where the yelling might have come from. You also see what looks to be just a large lizard um, with kind of bright red scales that seems to sit obediently next to one of the other lizard folk. Um, you can also see there's a, a clear trail leading away to the south of the camp. So sort of a, the opposite, or a different direction where you're coming in. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we found the lizard folk. We Correct could... me if I'm wrong. Did Balazar say they were not necessarily friendly, but but not necessarily? Exactly I think he used the word hostile. 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 Did he? Yes. I do have the ability to comprehend other languages. Should we like to try and negotiate? I could talk to them. We I mean, we were, we were also just asked to find out what happened, and there you go, Indeed. lizard folk. Perhaps it was lizard Done. folk. Right. Money, please. Right, so we could just turn around and leave. I feel like that is a job half done, though, Illivos. Might be a job fully paid, though. 500 gold. Right, 500 mm. gold. Um, so, we take it to a vote, then. <laughs> um, continue. Uh, say I. Turn around and collect the money now, saying that it was the lizard folk. Say I. Are we the most indecisive party that has ever existed? Uh, I would uh, like to Go slay on, them all. the money. You would oh, like to and then third option. I am curious on these precious gemstones and things too that he was mentioning, but that's just me. All right. So are we? Taking... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Gemstones. That's right. Good point. It might be and worth 500 one. gold. And 500 gold. Hmm. Right. <laughs> so. He did, did he say how many gemstones? He didn't give like a precise number. Like It a, is a mine. No, he Balazar didn't give you like a, a value of the shipment or a weight of the shipment or anything like that. So <laughs> what we're saying is that. They won't if know if go anything here, goes missing. He, yeah. You know, I. <laughs> Okay. Oh man. You know what? I, I'm like I, he's gonna fight with it. His 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 right hand is gonna <laughs> kind of struggle and try to mm. pull his hand back down. Now the now the gemstones have been mentioned. Because yes. let's be honest, they're a mining company. They are. Fuck them. We're gonna I, nick I the just, gemstones, right? I'm just very well, curious yes, how are. rare they are. You know, like... right? Well, and we'll take them and we'll examine them closely for value and importance and exactly, exactly. All right. Um. It, it, Ill, Illivo said it first, though. Just, just remember, mm. I, I'm just co-signing. True facts. <laughs> uh, I'm just co-signing. Thank you. So, <laughs> brief idea. More than welcome. Perhaps the lizard folk just let us pass through and go take the gems because, what do they care for gems, right? So we try that. Um, but maybe have you all sneaky folks, Rook, using that Ooh. hunter oh, ability oh. of yours to perhaps set up a bit of an ambush should things go south. Hmm. 
How's that sound? I will wait in the shadows for your signal. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, the signal will be the lightning strike. Uh, all right. Uh, you would have seen it before using thaumaturgy to like recreate the sound of like thunder and lightning. Gotcha. Right. It's, so it's also like, raining oh. right now. <laughs> Aruk will just, he'll just back up into the brush. Right. Um, trying to disappear. Edulis, if you'd like to do the same, you could. Stro, yes. Um, uh, Ilibos, yes, I'd like yes. to keep you close at hand if I'm in need of, oh, I don't know, a healing of some kind when these lizard folk fill me full of javelins. Yeah, I was going to hit them, but I, I could heal you, I suppose. Well, I, I just mean in general, like, we let them do the ambushing, you are my backup kind of thing. Oh, yeah, no, I meant in general as well. Okay, good, but, good, uh, good. Yes. <laughs> we'll uh, see. We'll see what happens. You uh, might get healed, you might not. More likely with me there, though, so. <sighs> All right. Um, are, you gonna, are, you go, are you going with him, Dro? I was... I think Dro I should know. take an op opposite ambushing point. I'll go with you. Okay. Okay. All and right. she's actually and, uh, gonna like. Hey. Uruk, which way are you gonna go? I'm over here. here. As he as he's already <laughs> like disappeared around the right side. <laughs> you just hear it from, in, from the brush. <laughs> he's actually like five feet away. He's like, I'm over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna like just two steps to the right. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna. Okay, I'll I'll go left then. <laughs> Just now noticing that Uruk is just just Drac from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, mm. yeah, Ed Ed so sorry, is yeah, it? Yeah, said they were going to do sorry. something. Hang oh, on, I, she's gonna. She's taking. She'll. I don't really know how this is gonna look. I I've never played a druid like this before. But she's gonna. She takes Panther form. Oh. And she's going to kind of creep into the shadows behind Dro. That's try to protect idea. him around the corner. Panther form is okay. very cool. So it's um I like this Il Ilavos and Sabaz who are gonna head down to the camp, is it? Uh, and I will take a pinch yeah. of soot and a pinch of salt, uh say a little rhyme and cast comprehend languages on myself. Okay. Um so do I'll the rest just hold of you... my shield. That's all I'll do. <laughs> all right. uh, do those who are stealthy want to make another stealth check? And um, sure. as you are trying to trying to hide, I'll I'll give you another chance. Um this would be a plus six with the Yeah. With okay. the the panther stealth team, that's oh. a seven. <laughs> wow, and that one seven. <laughs> okay, um, so Dro and Nurig, you guys do manage to <laughs> to make your way to both the left and right respectively, and and hide amongst um the trees. But um, perhaps Edgeless isn't used to the the panther form, and she tries to climb into a tree, and a branch snaps and breaks, and she kind of tumbles to the ground um, and you can see all of <laughs> all of the lizard folks heads snap towards you um or in your direction um but um they don't initially appear aggressive yeah. you, i would say you have a chance to speak if you'd like oh, oh hey hello friends fine lizard folk on this fine evening come on Ilivos, slowly hands mm. at the side right no weapons mm. So as you as you as you call out um, the lizard folk that that has this regular lizard like large regular lizard what I'll call it next to it kind of calls out to um, the rest of the lizard folk who just look like I don't know typical warriors um, he calls them to him and says guns to me to me some approaches no no uh, it's all right oh, it's all right I don't understand the languages do I N no oh, well. um, it's all I'm right. just sitting there like yep. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be just kind of like muttering under my breath, like, "Okay, we're gonna move. We're gonna move forward closely. Uh, they're calling the guards. We're gonna try and be unassuming, um, and just get the lay of the land here. I'll, I'll try to keep you informed. Um, obviously, so, thunderbolt means go, right? Yeah, just tell us if I gotta hit him. You got Give it. us a heads up. Yep, mm. of course. Uh, no, it's all right, <laughs> my lizardy friends. Everything is all right. Um, just some travelers moving through the area. Thought we might uh, find out what happened to the the mining camp here. Mm, well, all I say is, as you kind of walk down and you you say that, you kind of take a look around and you actually see 
before it was kind of hidden uh, behind the tents, there looks to be a large number of humanoid bodies um, dead on the ground. Yeah, um, right. However, they they all seem to be missing their heads. Um, <laughs> there seems to be splashes of dried blood across yeah. the tents and the ground. Illavos, a uh, uh, pile mm -hmm. of bodies on our right here. All of them. No heads. All right. Uh, right, well, I'm not sure what to do with that information, but thank you. Well, maybe it was slightly the more stressed now. Maybe it was the lizards. Yeah, well, I'm a little stressed too. At lads, <laughs> lizard folk. DM, this is a silly question, but do the lizard folk like? Do they look capable of like you know ripping someone's head off, or would they be using like weaponry and stuff to do so? Uh, well, the I mean, the lizard folk are relatively large like mm. you would assume that with a with a sharp blade they could chop a head off and they do okay. have a few sharp blades amongst them um okay but yeah so sorry Joel, what was the last thing you said <laughs> just approaching openly jovially friendly no no, no. stay back stay back this uh, is our loot oh uh, we're, we're just looking to see what happened here i uh, i can see from the large pile of trophies that perhaps you had a good hunt you well actually make an insight check Ooh. okay uh that is a 12. okay um saying that the eyes of the this kind of this lead lizard focus talking you get a, kind of a better look at him he seems to be adorned in various animal bones and he has a staff next to him he comes across more of like a like a shaman or kind of a mystic type rather than a, than a warrior and um, but his eyes flicker to the the bodies in the camp as you speak and he says um yes yes i'm trophies yes yes that was us stay back or you're next oh that is mighty unfortunate could could you tell me why perhaps you saw fit to slaughter a bunch of people you see him kind of turn and and quietly whisper um to the guards there and we kind of stumbly says like uh, the sacred ground uh, this is our territory yes we're we're being and strong and stem Right? Yeah, of course you are. You absolutely are. Um, uh, Ilivos, they're claiming that they killed all of these folk. But didn't the one we found have, you know, Infernal written next to him? Yes, I do They not... probably don't speak Infernal, do they? Speak to them in Infernal, see if they answer you. <laughs> um, just a moment, and, um, and then he'll recite something in Infernal. We live in the flicker, may it last as long as the old earth keeps rolling. <laughs> but darkness was here yesterday. As, as you say that, he kind of screams, you're like, no, stop your foul magics, no, no. Oh, no, I'm sorry, sorry. I was just seeing if you could understand a different language. I was trying to include my friend here in our conversation. Uh, it didn't work, Ilivos. They don't seem to understand it. They think it's foul magics. It wasn't them, then, was it? I don't believe so. <laughs> Now, my fine lizardy friends, I, I do have to say, I, I hate and detest and cannot bear a lie. Uh, why do you see fit to lie to us? Mm. Um, he kind of looks down and and um, and says, "We're not lying. Well, we're, we're not lying. No, no, this was us." Then he turns to um, a pair of the warriors next to him, and they begin to make their way back to the cart um, that they were peering into, and they look to be wrestling um, down a... Well, looks to be a, a large chest, um, but the lizard folks seem to be backing off towards the jungle a little bit. Right. Right. Uh, Ilivos, how hmm. badly do you want the additional pay? Well, that's a loaded question. It is. Well, I mean, you mean the gemstones and that? Aye, and the very large chest they seem to be wrangling. Well, I mean, I don't really know much about them, to be honest. Uh, if we knew they're sort of evil in that, then fair enough, but... It's about the way I think of it, too. Ah, uh, that's all right, then. Uh, so you were the lot that murdered them all. Fantastic. Glad we could get that out there. Big, strong, all the loot is yours. Uh, we were just going to go into the cave there, uh... And, and look at the gem mine. Uh, is that all right? No, no, it's not all right. And they're saying it's not all right for us to go into the mine, Ilivos. 
Well, well that's just it, cause, isn't it? Perhaps we Sorry. can come to some sort of um, agreement. Uh, maybe a trade of some sort. What do you have that we can't take? We've got all the food we need here. Elevos, they're being very difficult about this. I'm trying to offer things to them, and yet they do not seem to be willing to, to work with us on this. What do they want? They don't want anything. They said we have the food, they have the coin or the treasure. And, well, uh, what do we have to offer them? I, do you hmm. enjoy music, perhaps? What a thing to ask. Um, I'm running out of things to offer before I have my hunters kill them. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, and I guess just real quick, how many, do we know how many of them are there? Like, have we gotten like a rough yeah, idea there, of how there's, many are? There's half a dozen off them and one one additional lizard. You're just big lizard. I, I'm hoping yeah. that in all of this talking, I've bought quite a lot of time for our people well, to Well, yeah, set. I tell you what, why don't, just to, because obviously they're, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious there's potential for combat here. Oh, um, so yeah. this is the battle Take map. Take us to the map. Um, so, um, I would say, um, probably, um, Illavos and Sabaz, you guys are probably about, do you see my little ping there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys are pretty close. You're kind of within talking range. Um, for um Edulis, you would probably have to stay a little like quite a ways back, probably around here. Um if you did get any closer, they'd probably spot you. Um mm -hmm. but for um Dro and Uric, you guys pretty much have free reign to kind of get to, up to about here or here or anywhere anywhere around you'd like to be. Um Greg, I was going to make an Ozavax Croxel joke, and then I see by his token that he is indeed Ozavax Yeah, this Croxel. is, this is not <laughs> <laughs> I want to get about right Craig's here. Greg's past lizard man. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go here. Uh, you can... In your bio info, is that correct? How you drag your... Yeah, oh, you just dra uh, drag from your okay. character, right? So you, where your sheet is, you just drag your sheet, and it'll pull the token that's attached to it. Like to grab. Yeah. It is not letting me. From your your character sheet in your journal. Let's see. Yeah. So if you uh... just drag, like you see where your token is next to your name, on the character sheet, like the the journal portion of roll twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just drag that out. Oh, gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. I think I, I'm an idiot. Yeah, you don't need to open it or anything. You just drag the name, and it'll. Got there you, you go. Yeah, there we go. Got you. I was like, I was going into like my actual character. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, no, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. That is not where that is. Let me. I'm gonna get about like right in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um. So yeah. So well, sorry, Uruk, Angelus, and Draw. Is there anything you guys would like to do? Like prepare an action or, or anything like that whilst Sabaz and Ilavos are, are talking. Uh yeah, which which one of these is the uh, I'm assuming I'm assuming uh is it this guy right here that's the mouthpiece? Yes, the yeah. Mouth? Okay. Uh then I wanna try I'm gonna just kind of get ready to hop on this guy right here. Uh, <laughs> okay. Put the put put the put the knife in him, so to speak. Sure. <clears throat> mm. Rook's gonna be uh, looking to ambush these guys with his with his swords. I think so, Edul is just keeping an eye on Dro. She'll follow basically behind if he pounces. If he goes, she goes. So. Sure. Back me well. up. <laughs> Illavos, do you think perhaps we try to maybe intimidate them away? Perhaps. Oh, we can do that. Yeah. Act larger than we are, right? As a force. All right. Well, oh, I'm, I'll I'm give it a go. Oh. Oh. Uh, now, my dear friends, uh, it seems that we do have you and your friends uh, surrounded here. Ah, uh, our force closing in on you. I do demand that you leave this place and all of your gathered treasure so we may reclaim this mining camp and the bodies of the slain victims we wouldn't want you to become uh, further casualties of this conflict 
<laughs> hey, you can make an intimidation check at advantage. I assume he's saying something intimidating and sling my uh, maul off my back. Yeah, I, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. I'm, uh, that's a 20 thank you. DM. A 20. Okay. Um, as you say that, um, the lizard folk leader um, calls to the two at the car and just says, go on, just go on. And they all begin um, to make their way um, to the northeast. So um, should I put initiative on? Because I assume you get, well, do you guys want to try and stop them as they grab this chest and begin to to run? They're going to run, Inavos. I won't. I mean, they're about to run straight into Uruk, so... <laughs> with cause, then. All right. Thunderclap and smash, and then with thaumaturgy, just make the thunderclap sound. All right, okay. Uh, well, why don't you all roll initiative, and um, Drow and Uruk, you'll like, get a, oh, a surprise, oh, right? Yeah, sorry, so forgot loud. you right there. Yeah, I just like, oh pull the wax out of my ears. Oh, sorry, I forgot about By giving you one God's of those. God, that's loud. <laughs> Uh, uh, you didn't even know he was going to do it. It's just <laughs> sudden thunder. <laughs> 222. Man, Sabaz is on a roll right now. Yeah. Damn. I rolled something with a 2 in it, but it's not 22. <laughs> I rolled something all with the twos. a 2. Oh my god. Sorry, just grab me. There's a few lizard folk to roll for. All good, dude. It's alright. Uh, Turns out Connor's not going to give you shit about changing the music to the to the smashing jam. I will in a the... second. Sorry, uh, Craig's so alone is play. I respect it. So. Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you're right. He's doing a great job. It's uh, it's got a lot going on here. Thanks. All right. Sorry. That's their their initiative. <laughs> um... <laughs> yeah, so here's the battle music for you. Mm. Um, so, um, Uric, it's a surprise round for you, so if you'd like to, what would you like to do? <laughs> well, if the thunderclap has clapped, then, uh, yep. <laughs> then Hunter's Mark on this guy, uh, to okay. start, and then we will, uh, we'll come in with the, uh, I guess a short sword attack. So you're gonna run forward at this guy? That was the yeah. I'm yeah, gonna... you will get advantage because he is surprised by okay, you. Okay, cool, perfect. That would be great because that sucked. <laughs> nice. Okay, 24. 24 hits. 24 hits. All right, so there's the. Uh, I think that's the uh, seven piercing, and then the hunter's mark damage. I don't know why it's rolling the colossus slayer with that, but uh, so 12 total 12 damage total. on that. Okay. And, so yeah, you uh, sink your sword deeply into him. There's Perfect. um toggles on your sheet under where you make your rolls. Oh, you, you see okay. the check marks? Yeah, you can put them on. Yeah, and off. I can turn those off. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. but if you have the yeah, dueling I think style, you, you might have leave two more off. damage. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're you're a duelist. Yeah. So you'll get yeah, yeah. you'll get plus two to whatever that result was just now. So that'll be okay. Fourteen total. Yeah. Um. Although with with duelist, I have to be attacking with one hand, right, or one. That's weapon. short. I mean, short sword was a single weapon. But I have two weapon fighting, so I was gonna. No, I already uh... hunter's marked. I can't. Never mind. We're good. I'm done. Oh, okay. Oh, Interesting. Yeah. You're dueling, but two weapon fighting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That... Okay. Mix it up, you know. Sure. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> have options. <laughs> and draw. What would you like to do? Oh man. Since that, uh, since the, the big lizard thing is over there and I'm not really sure what is up with that, I don't want to take too many chances. It, it looks rather stout. Uh, I'm going to fire, uh, with my short bow, uh, from the, I guess from the tree line. Ooh. All right. Uh, that's a 16. Okay. So you do have advantage cause I'm um, surprised. Oh. Yeah. Fish for the crit. Oh. Oh, man. Well, oh, 16 does still hit. Awesome. 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 It, since I have advantage, could I apply uh, sneak attack to it? Yeah, you'll get sneak attack. Yep. All right. Then uh, let's uh, <laughs> let's do that uh, here. That's uh, oh, actually, wait, that's the wrong one. Wrong one. 
that was the rapier by accident. So that's a five, and then ah, uh, nine total. So nine total. <laughs> Big four sneak attack. Okay. Yeah. Ah, it's like it, sure. Uh, so your arrow comes sailing out from the tree line and, and sinks deeply into the into the ribs of this lizard folk, and he cries out. Um, but that ends the surprise round, and Sabaz, you get to go first. Uh, well, all right. Um, I think. I'm going to just spend a dissonant whispers on the guy we've been negotiating with here. Sure. Uh, so I'm going to need a DC 14 wisdom save. Uh, he rolled a four. Rolled a four? Wow, lucky me. Uh, he'll take 10 points of psychic damage uh, and needs to immediately use its reaction to run away from me. All right, okay. Um, sure, so with, I'm not going to do it because it would be pretty ear-piercing, but he he screams out and runs um, 30 feet away from you and takes the 10 psychic damage. Excellent. Uh, and then as my bonus action, I will take a step back, give a pat on the back to Illavos and say, well, you're up, old chap, and give him bardic inspiration. Okay. And your turn. So the um, loser folk next to the cart. Seeing you, Eric, it's going to uh, move across here and it will take a swing at you with its club. Uh, for uh, 14. Just hits. Okay, so that deals uh, five bludgeoning damage to you and then it'll make a bite attack, uh, which is a, a, a six. Um, which I assume misses. Uh, yes, just just misses. <laughs> okay, uh, that ends that one's turn. Um, this one here will um, make a dash towards you, Sabaz. Well, not literally dashing, but um, and it will whoa, attempt whoa, whoa, to hit whoa, you whoa, whoa. with his club. Hold on here, yeah. <laughs> big man next uh, to me. Hey guys, <laughs> it's uh, twenty-two. Yeah, all right. Uh, so that's three bludgeoning damage, and then the bite, that's a 19. Uh, well, okay, right! Okay, so you take <laughs> it's eight damage from the bite, actually, so uh, 11 damage total. Ow! Uh, yeah, but that ends this turn. Sabaz is bloodied. That's fun. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. It did, it did roll pretty high on that bite. Hell! Hell! <laughs> it okay. stole my roll. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Edulis. Uh Edulis still in her panther form is going to move forward using capitalizing on the movement, which I think. Can... Actually, I'm just I'm actually no because it's gonna. <laughs> okay, never mind. I take back <laughs> what I said. Uh, she's going to move forward into the brush here, uh, and she's actually going to cast spike growth. You, uh, sitting oh, around okay. their, their leader. I, are you going out of your beast yes. form? Okay. Yeah, they saw me before anyways, so okay. the prowl was kaputs. Um, so back into Furbolg sheep. Um, so it should be a 20 foot radius on the leader. Uh, yeah, the guy, the guy who was, they were talking to the, um, he's the one that ran away. Oh, I thought the guy's standing right. Where can I? How can I? You click and hold for pings. Oh yeah, this guy. That's just a oh, that's, lizard. That's that's yeah. a lizard. That's just the oh, big lizard. Oh, that's a, that's an uninvolved, shit. non-combatant lizard. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so in a twenty-foot uh, radius is is this is this that's fine. size? I still have a hundred. That 100... hits us. That hits us. Right. Just so you so know. So spike growth that will hurt us a lot. That's oh fine. yeah. It's fine. No, 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 no. It's fine as in I can re okay. retract if y'all are chill with it. Oh. oh, well, it's just like anytime we move in it, we're just taking a ton of damage. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm familiar with the spell. I just didn't know the radius was that big. I forget. I say just like let it fly. Yeah. We just learned to fly. <laughs> just let it go. Just like get no. wacky, dude. Do it. Let her rip. <laughs> My God, it's like I'm such a dumb. Um. <laughs> Okay, are you are you allowing me to retract? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's no problem. All right, sorry, Eric. She's gonna she's still gonna cast it on the leader guy, the one that was yeah there. Wow. So the radius will include okay. you, Eric. Sorry. Totally fine. Um, so is there an easy way to Joel? You're always bad at this stuff. Is there an so, easy way to draw a circle just to mark that? 
Uh, um, yeah, so the easiest way to do it now is use the new measurement tools. Um, hmm. And you draw yourself a circle, and then you can match it with a never mu Don't do that. I'll, I'll get I'll get the circle. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get your circle. Don't worry. Just like that. Just I like, like it. that. You nailed it. Uh, yeah. Can I not change the size of these anymore? Things about not being a DM. Anyways, you can see that circle there with the measurement tool. At least I'll work on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, anything else, Sedulous? Um, uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Though. Okay. Uh, Uruk. Um, yeah. Do I take damage from that circle? I think it's only when only you, move, you try to right? move, Only when I move. Okay, cool. I will, uh, I will continue to attack the individual that I have the hunter's mark on that's already damaged. Okay. So, coming in with another short sword. A 24 to hit on that one again. So that'll be, um, <clears throat> seven okay, yep. there. And then he's dead. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Fine, I won't use my Colossus. Uh, I guess then bonus action moving the hunter's mark uh, to the other, the next closest. Okay. Nice. And that'll be right. It. Fair enough. Okay. Um. So distant whispers doesn't last, right, Joel? It's it's no, over. It now. is an immediate just reaction, and then that's it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing, um, Lizard Folk, Joel, you will hear him call out in in Draconic, Ignite! And, the, uh, and he gestures towards the lizard, and it bursts into flame across its back. Um, and then, with his action, he will... Um, let's see. Is he gonna move? Um, well, I mean, I think he would, right? He's going to get a little bit closer um, to yeah. Uruk. So the, the ground but, I mean, is like camouflaged. He, like, yeah, he doesn't so, know. I mean, I guess he'll take two steps to Uruk. Um, and then, um, Angelus, if you want to roll me, um, I guess it'd be 4d4. Four four. Okay. Yeah, is it slash R space 4d4? Yep. To yeah. do that or use the roll matrix okay nine damage so yeah as, as he steps the the ground erupts beneath him and spiked rock pierces through his uh feet and he screams out in pain um <laughs> but he's still standing and then um he will clasp his hands together and or i need you to make a wisdom saving throw oh god i probably can do that <laughs> you got this, buddy. Uh, wisdom save. Where are you at? Actually, not the you worst are thing. Not the worst yes. stat. Seventeen. You you save. Um, so yeah, he clasps his hands together and briefly lightning flares between them, but then fizzles out as you resist its effects. Um, so that ends his turn. And lizard folk, that one's dead. Um, this one um will move towards you, Ilavos, and swing at you with his club. Uh, so that's a uh, 24. In fact, that's a natural 20, sorry. Um, that, that certainly hits, yeah. Um, so that's um, seven points altogether. Okay. And then its bite is a six, which is a miss. That does not and hit. that ends its turn. So, draw it's back to you. All right. Um, Help. <laughs> it's like, it's like a please, Help. please. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, since the other one that I because uh, the other one I shot took off towards Ilovos, I'm going to uh, look in the direction of Sabaz and Ilovos. I'm going to hit the one that's closer right here. Whoop. I'm going to take another shot with the short bow and see what I can make happen here. Uh, where is it? There it is. 21, 21 hits. Hit. And uh... It's an eight, and since I guess uh, it is next to an ally, so you do get advantage. Sneak right? attack, or, yeah. or so you get sneak attack damage, sorry, not yeah, advantage. sneak attack. So yeah, there you go. So that's a eight and a seven. Ooh. Okay, yeah, it, it's dead. So your your arrow flies out and embeds itself into the back of the lizard folk's neck, and it just drops dead. I'm I'm gonna shout out, be like, like like forgetting that I was supposed to be hiding the whole time. <laughs> be like, come on, that's me. Great <laughs> that's job, me. Dro now do the next one. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Flashy, is there anything else you'd like to do, Dro? Um, um I you know, since I'm kind of not sure about what's going on here with this cat right here, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna kinda I'm gonna edge just a little bit over and uh get over here, and then that's that'll that'll be it for me. Okay. Um so this lizard folk will and um, let's see. It will run across the camp and it can just get to you, Illavos, and it will swing its great club at you. Um, so that's a 10, which is a miss, and then its bite is a 15. Does 15 hit? Uh, Connor? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 15 doesn't hit, sorry. Okay, and that ends this turn. And then the lizard, which has now kind of got fire wreathing up its back, um, will move over in this direction. Um, I don't think it can get all three of you, but it will open its mouth and a breath of flame will erupt out towards uh, Sabaz and Ilavos. And it will get the lizard folk next to it as well. Will it? He yeah. He doesn't um, have to. Okay, no. Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah. Thanks, Joel. Um, <laughs> I'm I really need to handle on these measuring tools. Uh, okay, so the two of you need to make a dexterity saving throw. I'm so dexterous. Uh, 15. Uh, 15 oh. saves. Nine. Okay, nine's a fail, so... Oh my god, it rolled so badly. So it's nine fire damage uh, in total, so nine to you, Joel, and half to, to you, Connor. Right. Ow! I, I'm hurting so badly. Surprise, <laughs> Joel. Oh, I'm so you're injured! So, Baz, would you say you're very, you're very badly burned? I've, I've been burned so badly. Uh, unfortunately, okay. my tiefling heritage does not stop me from feeling the heat. Oh, wait, no, it does. All right. It does help, <laughs> yeah. It does help me a little bit. Okay, well, that right. ends his turn, and Illavos, you're up. Okay, uh, I am going to swing with my maul as a booming blade at this one directly right of me. Please hit. 13. <laughs> Uh, 13 misses, I'm afraid. All right, in that oh, case, I'll... Just, 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 bardic Inspiration. Oh, I'll use my oh, Bardic yeah, Inspiration. Right, yeah. Bardic Inspiration. How much is that, D6? The D6 right now. Two, 15. That, that just hits. Yeah! Probably. Nice. Uh, for right nine money. bludgeoning, and I nine will... Bludgeoning. Yeah, and I will, uh, use my Crusher to move them five... Sorry, Booming Blade, even. Uh, yeah, with Crusher, they move five feet away from me, so I'll move them here. And then okay. they immediately uh, well, so take you're... the damage. He's dead. No, well, he's no, he dead, they don't so... take the damage until they move after. He, he flies oh. back. Yeah, so... And collapses onto the ground. Nice. Yeah, Joel, it's, it's like after, if they move. Oh, Crush it does it. say willingly move. Uh... Yeah, uh, that's, not, that's not the end of my turn, though, Craig, I'm afraid. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I will invoke my War Priest and use my bonus action to hit the one next to me as hey. well. Okay. Uh, that is not going to be a Booming Blade, because it can't be. But it's the same roll, so I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, 17. 17 hits. Uh, for 9 bludgeoning. 9 bludgeoning, okay. And that's the yeah, end smarting. turn. Okay, Sabaz. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Um, yeah, alright. Uh, I'm gonna rotate around this way and help out Ilavos and just utilize my rapier to hopefully do something. That's an eight. I don't believe. <laughs> that's a that's a miss, Joel. Uh, I'm helping over here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to spend the 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 bardic yet. Uh, maybe. Uh, Drew, you're doing great up there. Keep it up. And I'll I'll spend another one. There you go. <laughs> okay, so Drow's got Bardic Inspiration. All right, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. That's it for you. Okay, so uh, the one south of you, or he will swing at you with his club. Um, that's a uh, 22. That will hit. Uh, so that does uh, six bludgeoning damage, and then you'll try and take a bite as well. That's also a 22, um, and that's seven damage on the bite. Um, so 13 altogether. Rick, okay. how you doing over there? Uh, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking rough. Dro, okay. help Uruk. <laughs> yeah, but that ends that I'm one's on my turn. Way. <laughs> <laughs> this I one's dead. Over so... Sabaz, I'm like, stop telling people what to do. You're nearly <laughs> bloody dead. I, I know, but look. Stop I'm... shouting. You're bleeding everywhere. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, you're <laughs> right. I'll heal you after. Stop complaining. Okay. Just trying to help. Edulis, back to you. Uh, Edulis is gonna creep down here to- Oh, excuse me. Uh, creep into this dead body here past <laughs> Lobos to Sebaz. No, no, don't you. mind me. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Fine. Okay, okay. Mm. And she's gonna cast Cure Wounds. Oh, that was at level two on you. That's twelve. Now will you do just stop yelling? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get really excited about participating. There's other creatures in this jungle than us. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I wasn't even thinking about that. I thought it was just being annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Anything else? Turn. That's it for you. Okay. Rick. All right. Uh, this guy with these attacks, um, actually going to uh, pull out a second sword here. So we're ignoring the uh, the duelist for a minute, and then I'm going to attack. Get him. First 17. one's a seventeen. Seventeen hits. hits. Uh, so that's gonna be seven piercing, and then the hunter's mark. If this will stay up. Uh, where's the hunter's mark? Hunter's mark coming in. That's another three, so uh, ten. Okay. And then second strike with the offhand. Let's see. I don't think that's gonna hit. Uh, Fourteen misses, I'm afraid. Yeah, not gonna hit. All right. Um, I think that is it. Okay. Uh, let me see what this fellow wants to do. Uh, okay, he's going to try and run. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to take the disengage action um, and begin to make his way across the ground. Um, so, Edgelis, do you want to roll? Um, I mean, I'll be honest, he's probably not going to make it, but um, I guess 3d4, and we'll see. It, uh, or sorry, it would be 6d4, six. wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 6d4, sorry. And Bob's if he's still, still alive, I'll be impressed. Oh, he's dead. Lines. He's still dead, though. He's oh still my... dead. So wow. he attempts to run across the ground, and the the spikes cascade up, piercing through his feet, and he just collapses and begins to bleed out. So um... He's gonna shout, at Eric! <laughs> Don't move! <laughs> um, so that I wouldn't go dead. anywhere. <laughs> this one's dead. So Adro, uh, back to you. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna take a shot at uh, the. I guess well, well, I guess it's the last one over here. Uh, at least as far as it's what Erwin's dealing with. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. And that's a twenty-five to hit. Yeah, that hits. And that's ten. That's and enough. He oh is my dead. God. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's one uh, point okay, off yeah, max. So they said we were famous for a reason. Yeah, we're all having a dramatic battle that. and Dro's just in the back <laughs> capping people in the head. Look at this guy. Yeah, yeah so another arrow comes flying out from the jungle. <laughs> then doing the and, Rob and... Van Dam tour. Yeah. <laughs> See? Connor, I knew I liked you. <laughs> oh, you have no idea I how deep that goes. I knew it! <laughs> um, so yeah, that one's dead. Uh, anything else, Dro? Um... Honestly, I think that's uh that's it for me. That's, that, that is that is it for me. I'm gonna uh, since uh, since I know my homie Eric over here is okay, I'm gonna kind of just wheel back around and face this way so I can be ready for uh, the burning lizard thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the uh, lizard folk next to you, Sabaz, uh, will attempt to hit you with its uh, with its club. Nope, thank you. I'm sorry, but no, thank uh, you. so that's an eight from the first attack, and the bite is an eighteen. Uh, so the bite deals it's just three piercing damage on the bite. Yeah. All right. No, that's good. Um, but it's gonna. I guess it'll just no. It will stay where it is. Um, and then the um, fire lizard will. Let me get rid of this body. I'll just move out over there. And the fire lizard will move next to you, Ilavos. And once again, it will take a deep breath and then spray fire. Uh, once again, getting Ilavos, Sabaz, and Edulis. Uh, so you all need to make a dexterity saving throw. And the lizard. 
Well, you let me have it. Oh, fuck it. You know, I don't care. I, I you, can, you can actually <laughs> angle it fine. Yeah, honestly. I think I can angle it no problem. So, yeah. yeah. 12, I'm trying to help um, us out here, all right? Mm, <laughs> 13. Okay, so, uh, Sabaz, you succeed. The rest of you fail. Um, so, um, those who fail, it's 12 damage and then 6 damage to you, Joel. Okay. And then okay. halved again due to racial. How much damage did I take yeah. from the, uh, the, the club thing? Or the bite? Uh, you took it was three damage from three the from bite. bite. Okay, cool. Okay, so there'll be that and then that. Got it. Sorry, what was the full damage of the fire, back. Kirk? <laughs> it was uh, twelve damage from the fire. Okay. Cool. Uh, but that ends the fire loser's turn and Ilavos. Uh sorry, I was thinking what I actually want to spend here. I'm, I'm just gonna hit the guy next to me. It's gonna be booming blade. Let's just hit him. Uh, Eighteen. Thanks. Okay, so when you say the guy next to you, do you mean the lizard folk? Oh, no, no, the, the, yeah, the, the, the fella, the lizard okay. fella. The lizard fella. Okay, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, he's dead. Uh, once points again, Damn. Um, flies back five feet, crashes into the tent, and do he is I dead. Do I want to hit the lizard? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to hit the lizard right now. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just end my turn here, honestly. I'm not going to spend anything else. Okay. Well, let's see who can kill the, if you can kill the lizard before it gets another turn. Sabaz, you're up. We're going to find out. I'm going to run around the side, go with another rapier attack, and hope for the best. That is a six. I six apparently am garbage at rolling weapons <laughs> today, so. <laughs> well, well, you, That's you're a miss. You're the planner. Saba you're the planner and the Sabaz strategist. Sabaz stays uh, mm. decidedly quiet and embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Angelus. <laughs> Okay, never mind. Um, I think Edulis is going to start to make her way over to Udric's side, and she's going to move her use her movement to get over there. Let's see, hide my ruler from y'all so you can't see that I can't count. Love that. Um, and then, sorry. I feel like I'm, <laughs> sometimes I'm jealous of y'all playing like hunters and stuff where you can be like, I just use hunter mark. I just shoot. I'm like, <laughs> I have spells. I have stuff. Shite. Okay. What uh, do you have? Uh, you want to know what's funny? I have yes. guidance and shillelagh, no club. And then <laughs> <laughs> guess, what spell, guess what spell I do have? Please tell Speak me. With animals. Speak with animals. Oh, you yeah. do have it. <laughs> And animal oh. friendship. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's fine. Something I'm about knowing our spell books. <laughs> it, it's okay. You know Something about no, oh, no internet. Bye. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, she's gonna cast. Uh, I'm in sixty. Yeah, cast healing word. Over on Uruk. Uh, get it to cast. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Just level one. You got a nine. Max nine for, points. That's good. Yeah. I love how I'm always like, I don't want to play oh. the healer, plays the healer. Do you do you want to leave the spike growth up or? I don't want to say anything, but. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I guess she'll she'll you break can her concentration it on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, OK, it's gone. You want you wanted so bad for Eric to walk around in there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Eric, so it's your go. Eric, not realizing that the spell is broken, <laughs> will still step on the bodies like their skis and then try to like shuffle his way <laughs> out of where the circle it takes it's the like circle is. Shoes. and then <laughs> jumping off uh i suppose i will try to i'll try to make my uh da -da -da. i guess i'll i guess i'll just oh wait let me see do i have anything that i can throw like i have a long bow <laughs> throw one of that that'll <laughs> that'll that'll <laughs> work <laughs> I have a longbow and I'm going to throw it. No, I'm just. <laughs> 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 you spike. Uh, I guess. I guess I can. Hunter's mark has to be. Is it melee only, or is it can be ranged? No, I think it's. I think Hunter's it's got range. Is, okay. It's both. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. then I'll move it you to this lizard, and then range I range. will shoot with the longbow. For a twenty. Twenty-three hit. hits. Nice. And there's uh, four piercing, and then. Hunter's Mark. Three, so seven. Seven total, okay. And that's it. 
That's it. Add draw. Please kill this thing, Drow. It's gonna burn one of us to death. <laughs> oh, no, like, I mean, it's gonna burn one of actually, us to death yeah. here. <laughs> Please. Well, no, pr <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no right? pressure. You have a bardic, Let's just see. remember. Oh, I do have a bardic. Oh, but how, wait, what, what's the bardic? I don't know if that's going to be a number. It's a D6, it's, yeah. D6, it I'll just tell you now, it's, it's got an AC of 12, so you need to get a 3 or higher. You got it's a 50 or 50. Okay, got you. Flip got the you. coin. Flip the coin. Mm. Four! Hey. You get it. But have you there done enough to, da to kill it? With sneak attack, there he's totally go. got this, right? Oh yeah, you know, we, we got oh yeah, 10 oh and yeah, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> that's enough. So, with a final arrow from Drow, the um, the fire lizard dies, and stillness reigns over the mining camp as you've successfully cleared it out. <sighs> There's no silence, because I'm literally gonna be like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well totally done, what? Drow. Well done. We, it, it's ours. Oh. Everything's ours. We, we, it, we can leave. We, we got the stuff. We, this is, I yeah. think I'm going to need some bandaging and a nap first, Dro. You may have not <laughs> taken any damage, but look at Illavos and Uruk <laughs> and just like, we look like shit. <laughs> I'm just going to be like strutting around. Just like, <laughs> you can keep the first watch then. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> You look at a rook and he is he's bent down and grabbed a handful of dirt and <laughs> has subsequently spit into it and is now literally packing the wounds on his side and <laughs> casting cure wounds. Rub some dirt in it. <laughs> oh my Whoa. god. It, 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 three, it, three points. Does three. that actually work? <laughs> it didn't it didn't work well. <laughs> Not very well. Oh my oh, god. That, uh, I would while we while everyone's recuperating and you know scraping off the soot, uh, I will cast a prayer of healing. To be fair, uh, uh, DM, at uh, what time of day are we now? Uh, it's kind of early evening, um, so the sun is. You probably got about an hour's worth of of light left before it becomes uh, complete darkness. I'm not gonna say. I mean, you will I'm get sure. Eight health. Or can hey. help us find our way through here at night, but I don't. I don't think we should go anywhere. I think we should take advantage I mean, of the camp that we have here. For the yeah, evening. I mean, we're already at a camp. This is great. This is this All is right. perfect. But I do want to point this out because you might have missed it. Um, Ilavos, that prayer is fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Pile of headless bodies. Just want to draw our attention to that. There now, the lizard folk oh, yeah. were claiming that it was theirs, but I assure you, uh, they were lying. Through their many sharp teeth. Oh. Oh. <sighs> oh man. Well, can we at least take the chest with us? Uh, Dro, you should probably take a look at what's inside and see if it's worthwhile first. Ooh. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah. And then I just kind of saunter over to the. <laughs> and then Edulus, <laughs> Ilavos, you might help me take a look at some of these bodies here. Rook. Yeah, I think while Drew goes and yeah, looks at go Cash, she's going to try to use medicine to figure out yeah. these headless wounds and what did it. <laughs> yep, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're dead. <laughs> That's dead. <laughs> they died. The end. And then Sabaz would like to lean over to Uruk as he's packing his wounds here. He's like, hey, lad, uh, if you need any more healing, you just let me know. But um, see if you can't find those prints we saw from earlier. Maybe do a round on the camp. These headless mm -hmm. things have got me a little worried. Maybe I'm just yeah, being I will paranoid. find the prince, but not before I take a trophy. Because he's going to look around for any sort of trophy he can claim <laughs> from this battle. Okay. All right. Um, so first of all, um, draw mm -hmm. the chest. You don't need to make an investigation check or anything like that. Um, it is padlocked, though. Um, it looks to be a heavy padlock. <laughs> Do you, would you like to try lock picking? <laughs> uh, uh, feeling a little. A little frisky here. I think I, <laughs> think I want to get that lock. <laughs> come on, come on. Well, tries, tries to lock. He like it. he just reaches. It's like I don't know if I, I don't know if I have the right stuff. He's gonna pull this this big, little rollout <laughs> to just let it fall down. He's got a bunch of tools and just like ah, uh, let's see. This, <laughs> pulls out a this looks hammer. like a. <laughs> Uh, I mean, ah, here's the tool for the job. This, one this is the one. This is the one. <laughs> and he's gonna uh, go to work on the lock. 
Sure. So you want to make a, a thieves tool check for me. All right. Let's see. And then I'm going to, I guess we'll, yeah, here, tribute. 22. Okay, yeah, you, you break through the lock fairly easily. Uh, for you, it's it's quite straightforward and simple. So the click, the, the padlock uh, comes undone, and you push open the, the lid of the chest, and inside are a vast array of neatly packed emeralds. Um, they're kind of placed deeply in straw, but you can kind of push your hand deeply into the chest and it feels like there's quite a lot of value in here. Um, you'd estimate, just from a quick glance, probably about two and a half thousand golds worth of gems. <laughs> Drew, are you having a heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> His voice is just gonna go like high, just gonna... <laughs> 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 Um, <clears throat> take your time. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, jackpot. Jack, 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 jackpot. Uh, this is this is. <laughs> Does the chest like glitter with light coming out of it? Oh, yeah, it's it's sparkling on him. Gold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Edelis, I, 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 catch me. I'm just gonna like fall out. <laughs> I'm not actually waiting for anyone to catch me. I'm just gonna pass out. Just like <laughs> should probably like try to and then fumble and miss. And oh god, sorry. Um, <laughs> that is oh, oh god, a lot uh, of gems. Pull out a handkerchief and just kind of dab myself. Just like I'm. <laughs> whew, oh well, I guess we don't need that. Uh, I mean, you know, 500 gold is 500 gold, but who? I, you know, I think we should leave. I, I I think we should leave. I don't even you. Know, who cares about this stupid mining operation? <laughs> right. right. Am I right? Honest. I mean, honestly, yes. But um, were we able to find anything out about the bodies? Uh, sure, you can make. Uh, what was? That? Are you looking? Are you looking around in the bodies, or what is it you're trying to work out? What killed them? Uh, Edgelis is basically trying to figure out how they were beheaded. Yeah, I would check. Have they got the same like uh, puncture Punctures. wounds? If you like, that's all. Sure, yeah. For. Um. I wouldn't even say you need to make a check. You've, you've kind of come across this enough times now to, to know what you're looking for. The bodies do have um, similar diameter of, uh, of crossbow bolts that have pierced them. Um, as for the the decapitation, I mean, it looks like a, a clean blow. Um, looking at the lizard folk, especially these ones, they don't have any sharp bladed weapons. Um, with them, they've all got clubs, so you suspect that it may have been something else that, that took the heads off them. She'll obviously divulge that information to party. Yeah. Definitely not these guys. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Clearly lying. Dro, maybe shut yes. the box and relock it, just in case we need to move quickly. I, lo I can do that. I can do that. <clears throat> I'm just going to close it back up. And <sighs> so damn sore. Uh, Uruk, um, where did you go? Just well, like, sorry, yeah, you know, we were yeah. looking for a trophy. I mean, you've got your kind of pick here. What, what do, you, what do you want from what, basically? He's, he'll, he'll go to the, probably the two that uh, he was fighting initially, up over here, and it's it, something, something obscure. It'll be. <laughs> he takes a, takes the head off and writes "pray no. nice." <laughs> <We're> like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was Eric all along. How do I write this in Infernal, guys? Uh... <laughs> It would, it would just be something obscure off of their off of their bodies, not even like a weapon or anything, just like literally, uh, like a, a belt pouch filled with yeah, like, like some some herbs or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just something something absurd, something that is of no value. Okay. <laughs> Did you find those toes, Rook? <sighs> He's he holds up. One of the bodies by the foot. No, no. Uh, His toes here. The tracks, the tracks we found from earlier. Do you spot anything like that? Drops it. Uh, <laughs> oh. He looks around and uh, he's gonna instantly start looking for similar tracks around the perimeter. Okay. You can make uh, an investigation check. <gasps> God, that's my worst. I know. Uh, so Keep bad. hoping he'll throw you a bow with survival or something. Yeah, like, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like the thing he's good at. <laughs> 
Um, looking around, I mean, it's a kind of a, a wide area. Um, you kind of search through the edges of the the clearing, looking at the ground and um, at the base of some of the trees, but you don't quite see see any footprints that that match the ones that were spotted uh, much earlier in the day. For a minute, he gets turned around and follows his own footprints in the <laughs> ground, but Master Hunter. Uh, There's uh, nothing. Well, that's either a good sign or a terrible sign. Um, all right. Um, yeah, Agilis. I, uh, DM if you want to, or I can ask her to look at it. But are these like um, basically rock cut gems, or do they have any sort of? Um, no, they, yeah, they haven't been polished them. or anything like okay. that. They are they're they're raw and uncut. They're ready to be shipped back, basically for processing. Okay. okay. And then and is most importantly, they're ours. <laughs> <laughs> and is this the mine entrance here? Yeah, yeah, looking to the north, you do see a, a cave um, that looks to head deeper, but it's kind of dark and shadowy, and you can't quite make out um, how deep it goes. But you can head in if you'd like to. I don't, I don't, I don't advise that we go in the evening. I mean, unless y'all want to. No, um, I am in need of a mm. rest, if you ask me. I wouldn't mind recharging. We've got tents ready made, and well, we could probably investigate some of the belongings. Maybe there's a, another journal to perhaps point us at our hidden adversary. Yes. Right. I would actually like to run the pockets of yeah, all of our of followers. everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the tents, okay. the pockets, um, everything. What can we find? Sure. Uh, I mean, you guys have spent enough time here. There's not really anything too hidden or anything like that. In one of the the beheaded bodies, you do find a key that matches the padlock on the on the chest, um, which oh. you could have used. Nice. Um, you find well, totals to about um, yeah, thirteen gold pieces on on the bodies as well. Um, the lizard folk they have javelins, great clubs, and shields between them. Um, the the leader has kind of like a a bone tooth necklace that dangles from from his neck if you were so interested in that um hmm. but yeah that's about it really there's just mm. the crates and things like that around the camp seem to mostly be filled with um food and and water and, and things like that nothing too exciting well as the treasurer of our company Do we uh, I, will, I will i will take the uh the 14 gold coins and yeah. I will Put them away for safe key. Very safe in his own pockets. Yes, mm -hmm. most certainly. All right, mm -hmm. well. Yes. Shall we set watch then? Use some of these tents for our own safety and then uh, get some rest and perhaps delve into the mine tomorrow or grab the box and head out. I like it. Don't like all of this death. This beheadings it's, doesn't sit well. Should we move the bodies elsewhere? I don't know, honestly. I mean, it's a lot to move. It is. Mm, Perhaps is we fair. just collapse one of these tents down atop it, right? Like a tarp to just cover oh, it. We could do that, yeah. All right, so it doesn't like smell, smell as less. bad. Yeah, I think. All right, uh, you get that side over there, and we'll just uh, just un unhook one of these tarp tents and just cover the bodies and stake them down. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they go undead, hmm. we'll he'll hear them rustling first, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's Wise. true. All right. And then we can take these other ones for our own rest. Who wants first watch? Dro, you volunteering? Oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll. You know, that'll give me some time. It'll give me some time to appraise the, you know, the, yeah. the merchandise we yes. have here. You know? Come here, come here. It's getting dark anyways. Um, What do you want the light spell cast on? Because you aren't going to be able to see shit anyways. Oh, yeah, that is fair. Uh, You know, um, <clears throat> yeah, maybe... Whole, uh, pull out a lantern, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, uh, can we... There's a get that big rock. There's like a there's, there's like a big old rock. That just, rock there, sure. Yeah, all yeah. Right, just, right. just put it on that. And mm. I will stay as close to it as humanly possible. Uh, let there be light, and one of these rocks will just alight with you know forty feet worth of light. Wonderful. Now you can <laughs> see at least a little the, bit. 
and everyone in the forest knows right where we're at. Well, hey, yeah. you know, you can't <laughs> keep watching. I'm glad watch the thing going around inscribing pray <laughs> next to things will have a hard time finding us now. Well, what else would you have us do? We can't keep watch otherwise. That is true. I would be quite it's useless as a, as, as, a, as a watch. And honestly, I'm in no shape to do the first. Oh, well, it's too late now. Too late now. All right. Well, it'll only last the it'll hour, Dro, so you're on fine. your own after that. It'll be fine. It'll give me enough time to start a fire. It'll be it'll be okay. Be okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, you, you bed down for the evening. Um and before I ask for protective checks or anything, I will say let's end it there because yeah. something might happen in the night, depends yeah. on how things go. Uh, I don't um, wanna really? run No way! <laughs> Is it the dude that's cutting off the heads of everyone? Because <laughs> nah, couldn't guess... imagine. <laughs> He's Killers returning gone. to the scene of the crime? Crazy. <laughs> 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 to the scene of like twenty <laughs> crimes. All <laughs> simultaneous. <laughs> yeah, so great. many crimes done here. <laughs> Yeah, oh, in this no. economy, no way. No <laughs> way. <laughs> that was great. Okay, cool. We'll end it there. Thank you so much for joining we'll us there. today for our first of potentially three episodes of Shadows of the Canopy here. Thank you so much, Craig, for DMing, and uh, we'll be back soon to find out who murdered everyone and if <laughs> uh, if Sabaz truly was Hunter Marked and is going to die and have a brutal decapitation at some point, right? We can only we might find one way to find out. Yep, there's only one way to find <laughs> out, so stay tuned. Bye. 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 Bye.